Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the SOS-Radio Podcast. All paranormal, all the time. My name is Jason Knight, president and founder of Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies, and your host into the unknown. With me, as always, are my fellow SOSers and brothers in arms, Mr. Dave Black. Hey! SOS co-founder and Claire Sensitive. Joe Erie. SOS mm-hmm. member and close Claire Sensitive. And joining us today is uh, Jojo Erie, Joe Erie's son. Joe, how you doing this evening? Good. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> how have you guys been? It's been a little while. Been been good. Tired, but good. Tired, but good. Joe, how about you? Good. I'm getting used to this weather. <laughs> cold. It turned really mm-hmm. cold. Very windy. Getting used to this weather. It literally just... Dude, I just got back today. from New Orleans, all right? That's you were in New Orleans like six weeks ago. Yeah, I'm still getting used to this. <laughs> the weather did like five days. I, I hate I hate cold weather, man. I hate it. The weather did change pretty drastically over the past uh, 24, 48 hours. Supposed to get and, some and snow. it was like seventy yesterday. But uh, yeah, so good, Jojo. How about you? What you up to? Uh, nothing much. Just smothered with homework and stuff. You gotta speak up, man. Just smothered with homework. All right, don't, not too loud. I thought you said Dave. No skateboard. No, mother and dad. <laughs> no. Oh. Yes, Homer. Anything, uh, I guess I guess I said we weren't going to do a Mr. Lincoln report, but we probably should. It's kind of our thing. Anything uh, quickly happened to you guys over the past uh, couple of weeks since last time we recorded? Mr. Lincoln report, of course, oh, paranormal actually, events we might have experienced. Well, we did the bonus episode where we basically talked about everything that had happened. That was actually just, uh, what, a couple weeks ago when we did the bonus episode, so... Not even like what ten days ago? When did we do that? It wasn't. It wasn't. No, that, that was like three weeks ago. Yeah. When we did the bonus episode. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. The bonus went. episode. I wasn't there to lead the helm. You guys did a good job. Yeah. Oscar kept you guys in line. Oscar's pretty <laughs> terrible at intros, but other than he that, really was. <laughs> I listened to that intro. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but um, thousands of people just heard that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, not not much uh, extra has happened to me other than what the subject of our show is today. Right, which we're not going to get into just yet. Yeah. Uh, um, how about you? Actually, when I when I was in New Orleans, uh, I felt something. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll sum it up. I'll talk about it later. But um, whenever I went out there, I go out there a lot. I never feel anything for some reason. I don't know if it's just so much people or the places we stayed. But uh, first uh, first day we went to the hotel, nice hotel balcony and stuff. Well, I, wa- I walk in. And what was the name of the hotel? Um, it was uh, the. Oh, um, the French Market Inn. The okay. French Market. Were you, where were you, were you by the French? Were you by the yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. By like on the Decatur. Okay. Yeah. Nice. But um, so basically, as soon as I walk in, I, I see a couple paintings. It's just just r- r- really old, uh, uh, nice place. Um, I, I'm I'm really focused on this one painting of this uh, this woman, and um, we go up and uh, go up in the room uh, later on that night. Uh, I go to sleep. I'm having all these crazy dreams, and I, I'm I'm waking up. And there's something by the bed. I'm like, holy shit! This is the first time I'm actually feeling something here. I always want. I never felt anything. You mean in New Orleans? Yeah, itself. New Orleans itself. And I'm, you know, but my and so there's something in this room. And uh, my wife actually, she, uh, she's like, Joe, she's like, I think something's here, and she don't feel anything. And I was like, yeah, I'm feeling stuff. Um, so whatever, I go, I go back to sleep. And this woman comes to me in my dream and tells me this quick the story of uh, of basically it was kind of like her life and and, and what happened and uh, she uh, basically uh, she it's, it's something about her uh, and some other guy being shot uh, and then there was a suicide and it, I, I I I couldn't like really puzzle anything together it was just really weird just like fragments of this weird stuff. So and then you know woke up in the morning. I'm like, wow, that was weird. Uh, later on, uh, that uh, that that uh, well, the, yeah, the next day uh, went back to, uh, in the room to go to sleep. I'm seeing things and feeling stuff again. I'm like, this is crazy. Uh, it's, it was in this one certain section. So I go downstairs and I ask the lady behind the counter. I'm like, you know, um, I kind of told her who I was and like what I do. And uh, I feel things in this room. And uh, and she was like, well, actually, she's like, did you know anything about this hotel? We don't have anything documented. There's not like there's nothing documented with ghosts or anything anywhere. Hmm. And she's like, I want you to talk to somebody. So she actually. Actually, uh, let me speak to like one of the guys that like was like running it now, and uh, I told him what I dreamt, and he's like, 
whoa. He's like, all right, well, let me give you a brief history. He's like, that lady in that photo that I dreamt of, um, she... Uh, she was like in love like with the with with this slave and but she had to marry her cousin and her cousin uh got jealous and wound up um shooting her in the head and then he killed himself but she lived from the the gunshot hmm. and um so that's what i so dreamt this woman which came is to you in your dream talking about being shot something about and then a suicide a yeah. yeah and, and here uh, you go confirmation from one of the hotel workers that mm-hmm. this woman was in fact shot. Yes, and wow. uh, and he kind of told me like a brief history, and I'm like, whoa, like that 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 was awesome. That that just came to me, and I knew that. So it was, it was, I'm not making stuff up, you know. So and then they're like, every once in a while, people say they get they get touched or see stuff, but there was nothing ever documented about this place. But that um, that actual uh, building, their that their her family uh, owned the whole French quarters, and they own a lot of like the old hotels. The French quarter, pro- the hotel properties. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they they were like the the richest family in that area that started up all that stuff, which was pretty cool. Later on, I uh, went back to the room uh, and I'm seeing stuff, feeling stuff again. The third night, uh, I'm, I'm hanging up. I'm uh, in, in the well. Actually, the third day, I woke up in the morning. My wife went to go use the the sh- you know jump in the shower. As soon as she went in the shower. Boom! Electric, like that static. That if something was there, I'm like, oh man, it's here. And something touched me on the arm. Whoa. And uh, I, I hardly ever get touched. You know, I'm yeah. like, the room was really active. Even like my wife that well, doesn't know, feel or believe, you know, believe too much. That's one of the problems with marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was she was witnessing things, and you know, but wow. So I, I stayed in a haunted room. Wow, in New Orleans. Yeah, great. And you always wanted to feel something in New Orleans. And I, and I definitely felt something. Some psychic like dreams, and uh, uh, you had confirmation of uh, content in that dream. Yes, so that's pretty interesting. It's about time you felt something there, other than the sweaty picture. I know. The last time I felt something on a on a vacation was when I was sleeping next to Dave. And, <laughs> but that's something else. Um, all right. Well, for you know, thank you for your Mr. Lincoln report. Mine um, just happened to me this week. Not gonna, you know, talk too much about it because listeners could go to our YouTube channel and see this video, uh, Supernatural Current Studies on YouTube. Uh, I caught some pretty strange activity in my garage at home where we sometimes record this show. Uh, if you look on our YouTube channel, look for Crazy Ghost Activity, Jason Knight, SOS Radio Host. That's the name of the title, Crazy Ghost Activity, and the SOS YouTube channel. And uh, I'll just let you watch it for yourself, and you can send comments uh, to subscription at sub- sub- submissions at sos-radio.com. I still think uh, you have cats and raccoons in your garage. That's probably what it is. <laughs> um, so I'll just leave it there. Go check it out on YouTube. Let us know what you think. Submissions at sos-radio.com. Guys, oftentimes I say what I really love about podcasting and the show is that we could take it on the road like we did at uh, Bridgewater Triangle in uh, southeast Massachusetts. So here we are again this evening. Uh, Today is November 19th, 2016. It's Saturday. And we're once again on the road. We are in Oak Lawn, far south suburb of Chicago, in a 1940s home. Uh, And we are with the homeowner, Brooke, and her daughter, Delilah. They actually requested, uh, they contacted us on Facebook and requested we come to the property because they're experiencing some pretty intense paranormal activity uh, centering around one of the daughters here. We're going to call her Dee. Uh, So listeners know these names have been changed to protect their privacy. Um, But uh, some pretty intense activity centered around a four-year-old little girl named Dee. Um, So what I'd like to do now is kind of segue to Dave Black and have him explain briefly how this came about, why we're here, when we were contacted, and why. Dave, could you kind of fill us in there for a moment? So it was last Sunday, I believe. Um, it's with that giant moon, eh? Yeah, it was during the super moon mm-hmm. Sunday, um, ironically. And I was, uh, you know, whenever the time changes and stuff, like I immediately just want to like sleep all the time and not shoot myself in the head because it's so depressing <laughs> to when it gets dark at 4:30 in the afternoon. It does, you're right. But me and my girlfriend had just gone out and and had like a big lunch. So we were already kind of sluggish, and then we went back to the to the house and just like lay down and slept. So around 5:15 or so in the afternoon, 
I got a phone call from uh, a gentleman named Keith, who's a Facebook friend of mine, um, and I recognized the name when he said, "Hey, it's you know," it's, he gave me his name, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" Like I recognize the name, but I don't I don't think I ever really talked to him outside of Facebook. And uh, apparently he was he's a magician, and I was a comedian, so that's how we wound up connecting on Facebook or whatever at some point. But I have like five thousand friends on there, so yeah, you have a ton of Facebook friends. So if somebody, if somebody, if anybody, one of my Facebook friends called me, I would be, I would like recognize the name. But so he called me, and he was just like, "Hey, I have this friend, and she has a daughter that's four years old that's been having uh, imaginary friend issues." Um, and apparently the father had been taking her to Bachelor's Grove, and the mother thinks that she might have brought something back with her, and there's there's been some pretty crazy things going on, and she's going to contact you on Facebook and wants to get a hold of you and, and talk to you. So um, I I went on, uh, I logged into my account, and I went uh, and looked at the, because if somebody's not directly connected to you, they're, like it winds up in your, your uh, spam folder, basically. Yeah, like that other inbox. Yeah, so I had to find it, and... So I contacted her, um, and uh, and I, uh, I actually called her, Brooke, and um, we talked for about 45 minutes, an hour, and she told me all about what was going on here. and uh, Which we'll hear from Brooke and Delilah firsthand. Yeah, and it was, it was, you know, a lot of times, you know how skeptical I am of people when, when they tell me stories or whatever. Even when it's you guys telling me stories, I'm like, yeah, you guys. Um, you know, like I'm always trying to find the the logical reasoning behind it. Um, but I could tell in her voice that she was not only she wasn't like pulling my leg, she wasn't like you know, she was very sincere, she was very worried and she was having a problem and she needed somebody to help her right then and there. So I got in the car and drove all the way down here. I drove an hour to get here, um, to check it out and I said at the very least what I'll be able to do tonight is confirmed for you whether or not there's actually something in the house or if it's just your daughter's overactive imagination. But if there's a presence there, I'll be able to tell. I brought my girlfriend with me, um, who was like, the whole way down, she was like, why are you doing this? Who are these people? <laughs> like, why are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, she you know, has a problem, and I'm pretty much the only person that can help her, so I'm going to go help her. And uh, she said, well, how do you know this isn't like... You know, I, I talk a lot of politics on Facebook and stuff. She's like, how do you know this isn't some, like, crazy gun nut that, like, wants to lure you into their house and then shoot you 15 times and <laughs> say you broke in or whatever? I was on the same page as your girlfriend because when I was texting you and you weren't getting back to me, yeah. I thought the uh-huh. same thing. Because as, for as many Facebook friends as you have, you have just as many Facebook enemies. Yeah. So, And it wouldn't be the first time someone has oh, tried to bro, yeah, yeah. get at you. But this is the thing. Right? Like, if, if a gun nut does wind up murdering me, they'll only be making my point. <laughs> So. <laughs> and then we'll hunt you. So um, you come here that evening, and it was late. It was yeah. It was uh, it was about it, it was about nine or ten o'clock by the time I got here. Uh, I think it was like right around nine thirty when we got here. And uh, my girlfriend didn't want to come in. <laughs> she just wanted. She's like, I'll wait out here in the car. If there's any trouble, let me know. Um, <laughs> and I was here. I was here for a good hour, hour and a half, a um, couple hours actually. Um, you know, talking to to the family and uh, checking things out and. Sure enough, it's when I first came in, um, I went into, uh, you know, I kind of quickly found the, the girl's bedroom. She was sleeping on the couch. Now, when you say she, this is D, D, the four-year-old girl D. who is, seems to be the center of Right. She was actually sleep, She was actually sleeping on the couch out here where we're at right now because she didn't want to sleep in her room that night because Junie... Her imaginary friend was being mean to her. Junie, guys, um, is, does that sound really familiar <laughs> or what? Um, so while she was, you know, we were talking and stuff, I went and checked out the little girl's room, and sure enough, there was definitely a presence in there, um, specifically in one corner of the room. Um, and then I went down into the basement, and there were some pretty intense um, vibes down there as well, as well as creepy dolls all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is very comforting, um, and uh, so I, you know, I I recorded and took some pictures and things of that nature. I went outside and took some pictures. Didn't get anything conclusive on photos. I did um, record audio and video, or video with audio, on um, the camera, but I haven't had a chance to analyze it yet. So there might be something on there. Um, 
came back up here and talked to the family for an hour uh, and a half or so, just discussing, you know, not only theories and where I'm coming from with all this, but also um, their experiences trying to kind of, like, help them understand it. Um, and then upon going back into the girl's room, it's like it charged up. When I first got here, I said it was like it was nothing too intense, maybe a six or a seven. By the time I left, it was like full blazing ten, wow. almost, you know, like the knob ripping off to eleven. Um, and right before I decided to leave, um, I walked up to the little uh, to D, who was actually sleeping on the couch here. She hadn't woken up, she hadn't stirred awake, she hadn't like she was sleeping the whole time. Um, and just in walking up to her and putting my hands over the space above her, I could feel this ball of like energy hanging above her. And it's like nothing I've ever felt before. I've never felt it that like focused or concentrated uh, around a specific person. Whenever I do feel it, it's either a spot in the room or it's floating around or it's passing through you. But this was like definitely hanging over her. It was right on top of her. And I quickly, like, kind of backed away, went into the bedroom to see if it was still in the bedroom, and then it was super intense in the bedroom. So I came back out here, put my hands over her again, and it wasn't there anymore. It had moved. It had moved. It had it so figured out, it, it must have figured out that I knew what it was oh doing. Oh, my God. Um, and then, um, you know, I, as we discussed in the bonus episode, we, we um, you know, I have this new way of communicating with it where I can actually send it away and be like, come to me when I get to the right letter in the alphabet or right, you know, date or whatever it is. And um, I did that a little bit in the basement. Um, I told it to give me its first initial. And I went through the alphabet and I got a hit on I. Then I went through two or three more times to confirm and got a hit on I again. So I'm like, okay, let's do the second letter of your first name. And went through and I got a, uh, T. Um, then I went through again, I got T. I went through one more time, I got T. Wow. And then I'm like, okay, let's go with the third letter. And I went through the alphabet, nothing. Went through the alphabet again, nothing. Went through the alphabet again, nothing. And I'm like, okay. So does that mean it's it's saying its name was... I-T. I-T. It. it. That's all I got. Um, <laughs> Why did that just give me the freaking chills, man? Um, but, uh, so... <clears throat> That was that was obviously when I first got here, but um, yeah. So I'd like to uh, explore that a little bit more. But absolutely, and this is, you know, this is the first pass at this. This is going to be an ongoing thing. This is yeah. going to be a one episode and done sort of. Sort yeah. of uh, Tonight, um, uh, Brooke and Delilah are here um, to talk to us and tell right. us their experiences, and we want to get a what's, high level understanding of what's happening here, what's been going on here. But when uh, when we do have the time we will be back again. Um, D is not here um, this Correct. weekend, um, and we are going to have an interview with D about Junie. I, I want to know more about Junie because, you know, as listeners might remember, um, episode 22, which, I mean, the hits are just unbelievable. I mean, that particular episode is just so popular. That's where I explain episode 22, Mandela Effect, Time Slips, Alternate Realities. Uh, listeners, if you haven't heard it, check it out. That's where I explained the experience that I had with my daughter, who's eight, Talia Knight. Um, and a lot of what I'm hearing about this case, where we're at today, echoes a lot of the same things that I had experienced with Talia. Um, which, when I heard about this, that made me perk up right away, because it hit, kind of hit home. Um, so here we are. And, and I just want to point out that we've had... I don't know, half a dozen different things we've come across, different hauntings we've come across in the last few months that we've been meaning to get to or learn more about or whatever. And um, Oh, you know, speaking of, you know where I was at last night? Fireside. Remember the oh, restaurant? yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that on. was one of the places. I took the yeah, we need to go there. there. When Katie was out. But um, this is the thing is, uh, you know, when Brooke contacted me, it was like this... Not, not only did we talk about th this, but I'm, I, I asked her explicitly, like, could we do a podcast about this case? And specifically talking to your daughter about right. Junie, and she said, yeah, as long as, you know, names are changed and privacy is protected. Of course. Um, so so this, this case really spoke to me as, like, this is something we have to do because all these other places are, like, 
yeah, it might help somebody in the long run of like being a tourist destination or whatever. But this is like these people are having there is something happening yeah. here. And I'll tell you this: <laughs> this is my first time here. Okay, As I, I I didn't know anything about like any rooms. I, I heard like a couple stories of what happened. Okay, so I as soon as I walked in, def, there's definitely a feel in the house. The house is backed up with energy, um, specifically in certain spots. You walk in the living room. Uh, it's a little bit there. You can feel it. Dining room, it's a, it's a little bit more there. You walk in the kitchen, it's definitely a little bit more in the kitchen. But you go to uh, the actually master bedroom, it's a little bit there, nothing. You walk into D's room, boom. I mean, that's the heart of it. So that would be D and Delilah's room, correct? No, no, no. Delilah's. No, well, then, yeah. Delilah's room's in the back. There's and the Deli- middle, oh, the middle okay, daughter yes. shares a room with. We'll let the homeowner and people who live here kind of give you the lay of the land. Uh, yeah. Visually, if they'll still describe it, but okay. But basically, even I'm still. Yeah, yeah. Ba- basically, because there was two beds in this room, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the ten-year-old, that's the ten-year-old. The and the ten-year-old. The ten-year-old is mm-hmm. not going to be involved in this. Yes. Case, at least right now, they want to keep it from her. So, but yeah, D's room—that's that's the heart. And there's a specific area downstairs, and there's another bedroom where there's something. But um, basically, me and Dave just nailed this because there's specific spots where things happen. Yeah, so Dave made through first, yes. kind of plotted out the house. Didn't tell you too much about I, it. I at didn't all, know anything about right? any. Yeah. And then Dave, Joe came in today. You and him came in together before I got here, and he was able to nail. Yeah, he picked those he picked same all spots the same spots you did originally. Yeah. So there you go. Um, he had a little bit different inkling of the basement than I did, but but also, there's a reason for that too. Yeah, we'll, which, we'll get yeah. to it. I want to take care of some housekeeping, yes. you know, because we're starting to get into lay of the land, yes. where the homeowner is going to have to speak and kind of give us a visual. I just want to do some housekeeping, Brooke. Uh, we do have your permission. To be here, yes. correct? To yeah. be mm-hmm. reporting on this show? Yes. Um, pretty much anything's fair game at this point, as long as Basically. identity is, yeah. is protected. As I said, we are in Oaklawn, in a 1940s-ish home, uh, um, sitting in the living room. Um, we will, and I kind of touched on this when we first got here, there'll probably be some pretty pointed questions, some pretty candid questions. Um, that's that's totally kind of part fair. of yeah. what I do. Right, we're, we're trying to understand what's happening here because some some hairy stuff has happened uh, in the family, yeah, fairly recently. <laughs> yeah, um, so we need to get an understanding of what's happening here so we can move forward and hopefully try to help in some way. Whatever's going to help my daughter and whatever can help possibly someone else if they're having this, that's perfectly fine. Okay, um, Delilah, same from you. We have your permission to. Uh, talk to you, have you on the show, ask you questions. Yeah. Candidly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. We're on the, usually we're on the ta- the infamous Tascam. Listeners know this device. Uh, we don't have our bikes or anything or, or mixers in front of us today. We're just recording Tascam. So uh, any audio anomalies or any audio uh, quality issues, forgive us. But that's part of taking the show on the road, which everyone seems to like. So, all right. With that said. Um, Brooke, here we are sitting in your living room talking about some pretty crazy things. You let us kind of have free reign of your home, which we appreciate. We've walked around pretty much every square inch of this place today so far. Yeah. Uh, We've tried on all your clothes. I know, right? What a pretty expensive closet, you know? Waiting for Delilah to come home. We didn't want to start rolling until Delilah got here as well. Um, As Dave Black mentioned, Dee, your youngest daughter, the four-year-old who seems to be the focal point, isn't here this weekend. Right. Right. She's with her father. Yes. Ex-husband, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so we're going to come back and we also have your permission to talk to her. Yes. Kid gloves, of course. Please, um, yes. not, Yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, I just went through this with my daughter. She's a little bit older. She's eight. Mm-hmm. So uh, I kind of have a little bit of experience uh, with this sort of thing with kids. So as long as we have your permission, uh, we'll continue. Yep. Why are we here? What are we doing here? Um... What happened? Basically, start from the beginning. Um, a few months ago, my daughter started talking about her imaginary friend, Junie. And at first, we really didn't think anything of it with the divorce and everything else. It was, okay, well, you know, coming from having a psych background, this is, you know, just her way of coping with the divorce. We really didn't think that there was anything going on with it, didn't think that there was anything wrong, you know, didn't see an issue. Um we 
she was over at my aunt's house uh, a few weeks ago, and um, she made a comment to my aunt about how her imaginary friend died. And it kind of raised the hairs. I mean, it, it definitely, you know, she told my aunt that her imaginary friend died, was killed by a car. Hmm. And as a mom, you're hearing this and you're going, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, right. kind of like, wait a minute. How do you know these kind of things? You know, we don't watch television like that with her awake. We don't, you know, she's usually watching Disney Junior. Nobody on Disney Junior dies by a car accident. I'm sorry, but <laughs> that would be shocking to me if it ever there happened. Was, there was that one episode of Zach and Cody where uh, the one guy died of a heroin overdose. It was a pretty intense episode. We don't even watch that <laughs> in Cody, okay? We're talking just strict cartoons. Um, yeah, Doc McStuffins kind of thing. You know, that's all we watch 24-7. Bubble seven. Guppies? Yeah, Bubble Guppies Bubble, is another Bubble one guppies, that yes. I really want to find the creator of. <laughs> all, um, all, all shows written by people that are, are, are on a lot of acid. Uh, basically, yeah. yeah. Paw Patrol is another one yeah. that I'd love to find the creator and choke him to death. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it just... From there, it kind of was, you know, it, it gave us, like, the red flag to start kind of paying attention. Um, my huge red flag did not come until the night before I contacted Dave. Um, so just over a week ago. Yes. Just over exactly a week ago. Exactly a week ago, in fact. Oh, okay. So one week ago. Last Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. yeah, that's right. There was an intense event. What was that event? Um, I was sitting here. I was by myself in the house. Um, the other girls were out. Um, and it was just me and Dee, and we were sitting here on the couch, we were cuddling, watching a movie. Um, my dog was laying on the couch. Uh, my other daughter's animals were locked up in her room, and she'd asked me if her imaginary friend could spend the night. And I said, you know, I'm not thinking of it. I'm like, whatever, that's fine, I don't care. Um, <laughs> at the time. Um, the next thing I know, I see this ball roll out from underneath my couch and roll to the middle floor. <laughs> and I'm going, um, okay, well... There's the dog. Here's the child. The other animals are across the whole entire house in another room with the door closed. So I'm like, they're really afraid of people, so they don't really like to go near anybody. And those other animals are what? Cats. Cats. Yes. Are they? And they're not allowed to really run around the house. Well, they don't because of the dog. Because of the dog, the dog okay. will like right. to try and play, and the cats don't want to play with her. Mm-hmm. She's three times their size. Mm-hmm. Plus. Plus, when I leave to go somewhere, like, I keep my door closed just in case they get out or something. Because, like I said, they don't really like people, so no. they run away. <laughs> okay, so definitely not the cat. No. Dog was accounted not for. Not the cat. Dog is accounted for. Okay. Too big for, like, a mouse or something to push. Um, I'm looking under the couch, and I'm going, okay, well, there's nothing there. So, you know, I've got the hairs in the back of my neck standing up a little bit, and I'm going, oh, okay. It's a little strange. Um, I call my sister-in-law, and I'm on the phone with my sister-in-law, and I'm telling her what's going on. And she goes, well, tell your daughter that, you know, her imaginary friend cannot spend the night. And I'm like, okay, I will call, and I will tell her. And so I, I went over, and I was listening kind of through the door, like on the opposite side of the wall. And I'm, I'm listening, and you could hear my daughter having a one-sided conversation at the time. Hmm. And I'm going, oh, <laughs> I'm really not liking this. You know, kind of one of those things where it's like, is she really talking to somebody else, or is this just her playing make-believe? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I walked in there, and she immediately stopped talking, and I said, you know, Dee, I said, it, I, I think your friend needs to go home. I said, I, tonight's just not a good night for us. I said, you know, I said, you got to go to bed soon, and she seems like she's going to keep you awake. I'm like, you know, and it's, maybe she should just go home. Um, to which my daughter proceeded to tell me, okay, Mommy, you know, that's fine. Um, and she walked her friend to the door, opened the door, like physically opened the door, gave something a hug, not like, you know, when they hug themselves, um, looked like she was hugging something, opened the screen door, and then closed everything up and went back into her room. <laughs> and I'm going, you know, I'm just sitting there going, okay, what did I just see? What, see? what, what yeah. did I just witness? Because yeah. I'm, I'm logical. I, I have to be able to explain what just happened? I, I don't, I, I guess you could say I'm kind of skeptical because I don't fully believe unless I see it in front of my face, unless no. I cannot come up with an explanation for anything. Yeah. So I, I kind of made up my mind. I'm like, well, you're going to church tomorrow morning. Let's see what happens there. Um, we haven't been to church in months, so it was like, okay, well, we'll kind of see what happens. Um, we went to church. I told our pastor what was going on. He said, well, I said, let me have a conversation with her after church. And I said, that's fine. Um, he talked to her. 
And the things that she told him were so unsettling to me, I was almost in tears. What were some of those things? Um, she told him that her friend Junie gives her nightmares every night and says horrible things to her that she doesn't like and that when she tells her to stop, she won't stop. She just keeps telling her these bad, awful things. Um, and that if she wakes up from the nightmare and she tries to come and tell Mommy that Judy won't let her. She won't let her get up. She won't let her come and tell Mommy. Which is kind of why when Dave said that the other night when you, she was sleeping, when you said that the energy was above her, oh, it really freaked me out because I'm like, well, it, it kind of confirmed what uh, she had told our pastor. And I'm going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. But I didn't tell you at the time, and I hadn't told you what he had said before that either. So it really, for me, confirmed what you were saying, and it confirmed what our pastor had said that she told him. So I was like, okay. I'm like, this is a little weird. Um, just things weren't adding up for me. And I'm like, well, I'm like I have the two younger girls today. My oldest daughter was working. I'm like, I'm not going to be home alone today. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go by my brother and sister-in-laws and hang out with them. And um, I, that's when things just went from, okay, I can kind of, we'll, we'll figure this out, to what the hell is going on. And what happened there? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, here, Delilah, she looks like she's been wanting to jump in and say something. Yeah. What did you want to say? Um, the other day when she woke up, like, after the night that you were here, mm -hmm. she, like, woke up really late, which wasn't, like, normal for her. She slept the whole night and fell asleep early. Like, she'd wake up, like, really early in the morning. That's how she is. Like, she doesn't like to sleep. Like, when I get up for school, she gets up, too. But she slept in until, like, what, I want to say, like, 10 or 11, yeah, which is crazy for her because she does not like to sleep in at all. Like she was drained or something. Yeah, she does not like. She's my early riser. I mean, these two can still be sound asleep, and she'll be like, "Okay, let's go." Yeah, even when she's um, sick, she'll want to be up. Yeah. She doesn't want to be sleeping, which is unusual for a kid her age. Like you would expect them to sleep when they can. Yeah, but I don't know. I just thought that that was like kind of creepy to me like especially after what you said that night i was like well that's kind of weird <laughs> so what is it that the pastor said that was confirmed for you when i felt the energy when, hanging over her Thank when you. he this. said that she told him about junie not letting her get up from a nightmare to come and tell mommy oh. um that was when you said that you felt the energy over her so powerful it was like okay well is that what she's doing? Is she literally holding my child down and not letting her come and tell me? Because that was the big thing was she can't get up to tell mommy because Junie won't let her. Um, that, and I'm still getting mm -hmm. uh, emotional about it because I, this is, that's my baby. Um, <laughs> that, that really bothers me. It bothers me to hear that she can't get up and tell me. She can't come and right. tell me. Absolutely. Um, and I've always, I mean, all of my kids have been raised, you know, if you have a problem, I don't care if it's the middle of the night and you just can't sleep. Come tell me. Come get me. I will stay up with you. I don't care. Um, and you've... I don't know. I think you'd care if your kids were like, yeah, there's a flaming demon skull in my room. <laughs> yeah, that would <laughs> definitely kind of get my attention. <laughs> but clean it out so I can sleep. <laughs> I don't get my attention, yeah. I don't think that it's like... Per se, holding her down, I think that it's scaring her so bad that she doesn't want to get up, or she like feels uncomfortable getting up. Sometimes you feel like physically drained, you know. I I have a problem. I have a problem when I sleep that like I can be like thirsty, and it seems like such a chore to just like yeah, roll over yeah. and get a <laughs> bottle of like drink out of a bottle of water. Definitely. Like and, well, and, yeah, and we this. This energy being there all the time probably intensifies any feelings. I've been, I've been held down before. Um, Some of that I so can kind of understand. But it's almost like when the house is too cold and you're like, i got to go to the bathroom, but it, I don't know. She's not cold. like that. <laughs> she is not that kind of child. She <laughs> will get up in the middle of the night to go get a sip of water and crawl back in bed. I yeah. mean, that's how she is. She'll get up to go to the bathroom and go straight back to bed. I, nothing has ever kept her in bed. She'll get up to get a piece of candy in the middle of the night so that mm -hmm. she can sneak it and go back yeah. to bed. I mean, she's always been like that. So to hear that there's something keeping her in bed and it's it's not well, like... There's nothing a parent wants to hear. No. no. I mean, I went through it too and the stuff my daughter was telling me, I was 
barely keeping it together, you know. Yeah. yeah. That was just in emotional turmoil, but you got to keep it together for them, you know. Right, and that's why it's it's been like, okay, well, you can tell me what you're going to tell me, and you can, you know, I'll listen to her, and I kind of like, okay, well, it's not freaking me out. I'm not going to tell you it's freaking right. me out, but okay. I'm going to sit here and go, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yeah. Now, D, the healthy four-year-old. Absolutely. Eats her, eats her vitamins, drinks her milk. Absolutely. Right? Nothing physically. Nope. Never emotionally wrong. I mean, well, hard aside to tell from going through the divorce, um, emotions. But you know, I mean, this usually she just we we don't try and show her anything's going on. Um, if there's temper tantrums coming from her father, then you know, I just kind of let it roll off and go, okay, fine, or I won't let her see it. Like, I'll take it outside, and I will let it out wherever my children are not. Yeah. Um, I, I do not, ever since he's been gone, I just want positive energy in my house. And that's basically what it's been. I mean, for the most part, I, you and I had our issues, but, you know, we fixed those. So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, she seems perfectly okay with it now. Yeah, sure. Well, oh, yeah, we were uh-huh. much better. We couldn't even be in the uh-huh. same room without screaming at each other for, like, two months. And yeah. Delilah, Delilah, you are 17? Yeah. Correct? Okay. Yeah. She's my going to graduate and move out on me and leave me, so. <laughs> but I'm going to have to deal with it all alone. Um. <laughs> so, I mean, she's four. How long has this been going on? I, I would say at least four months, five months. Four or five months? Yeah. And... Anything significant happen within four or five months? We now, like, we're looking back going, okay, well, there was a time that we found a shoe on the couch when our dog was locked up in the bedroom with us. I'm sorry, I meant um, in her immediate surrounding, uh, with the family within four or five months. No. So, and and the divorce happened a year and a half ago? Is that correct? It's ongoing. Um, It's... He's making it difficult. Um, but uh, the separation and everything, the court that we went through was all a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, okay. But this just started about four to five months ago. Now, yes. what happened, what started happening with her four or five months ago that you told me you thought might be a catalyst for this? Um, her father started taking her to Bachelors Grove Cemetery with his paranormal <laughs> investigator girlfriend. And they started. Huh? I was just saying, like the industrial sites. Yeah, he, he claimed like he claimed for sure Bachelors Grove. He claimed some industrial sites and um, something about the I and M Canal. So, in other words, taking her to haunted locations. Basically, anywhere right. you wouldn't take a four-year-old. Uh, uh, take so, it. just so as I described it, a checklist of places you should never take a four-year-old. Exactly. Yes, I so love how you put that. Yeah. Just so <laughs> listeners know, Bachelor Grove Cemetery, one of the most haunted cemeteries in Illinois. Some people claim in the United States, if not the world, hmm. which, ironically, we're headed to tonight after here. Um, that's where Father is taking this beacon of light, this <laughs> bastion of energy. The, uh, the, 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 the cemetery in the girl. middle of the woods. Yeah, this four-year-old four. girl uh, taking her to him. So did she take something home? Did something attach to her? Um, did it trigger something within the child herself? Uh, maybe not necessarily an attachment, but open something up. Um, we don't know, but okay. Yeah, that's so we got not a place for a four-year-old. Yeah, that's right. what I would think. You know, being a, a, a normal, <laughs> sane parent, I would not think. I mean, I wouldn't even. You know, my seventeen-year-old, I would be a little bit leery about taking there because I, I take her to horror movies all the time. I that's fine, but yeah. Oh, she's also 17. Right. <laughs> the horror movies stay in the Exactly. Movie. No, it don't come out and scream at you. Um, it's a cemetery in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Uh, the question I have for you is, is there anything that Dee ever says that would indicate that she's taught, like, does she ever refer to it as a ghost? Or any, is there any anything that she alludes to that would imply that it is a spirit or a ghost or a dead person. When she had made the comment to my aunt about how she died, she she told my aunt how Junie died. Um, there was the other day we were walking into uh, one of the dollar stores, and I told her, I said, oh, I said, baby, I said, be careful, there's a car. And she goes, oh, mommy, I know, the wheels will kill me. Now that coming out of my four-year-old's mouth, 
sent chills up my spine and I was just, I wanted to pick her up and literally just put her back in the car and go back home. Um, it, it just, that's how bad it got. Um, has she said anything to you? Not really. She just, like, I'm her big sister, so she basically just hugs me and then runs away. Or yeah. she comes to me if she needs, like, a like package opened or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, here, open my juice, lady. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm usually at work, so if I'm not at work, I'm either here sleeping or something else or at school, so. Yeah, I mean, she'll she'll make, like, silly comments every once in a while so that you know she's making it up but then there's other comments that'll slip through and you're like what did you just say yeah yeah like the other day i asked her i was like oh what um what happened to Junie's parents and she's like oh her mom and dad are dead and i was like oh <laughs> yeah and then i was like well yeah. what color hair does she have because i was trying to like figure out like what's going on and she's like she has blue like you and i was like oh, okay <laughs> yeah but then we sat down and i was sitting there recording her and she said she had dark hair like my other daughter and i'm going Okay, this is a start. I'm like, so I'm like, is she, you know, big like Delilah? I said, or is she, you know, medium size like your other sister, or is she small like you? She said, oh, she's small like me. I said, okay. I said, so how old is she? Oh, she's four. I'm like, okay. And, you know, we were kind of getting a little bit of information out of her, but then, you know, um, we asked her, well, what are her parents' names? Oh, Chase and Rubble. And I'm going, okay, they're not Paw Patrol characters. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it's, but then I, you'd ask her, you know, okay, well, do you know your last name? And she's like, no. I'm like, okay, I'm like, well, can you ask her her last name? And she goes, she doesn't want to tell me. I'm like, hmm, okay, thanks, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just different things like that. It's like, you know, she'll go from, you know, okay, well, why don't you know her parents' names? Well, because she doesn't want to tell me. Oh, that's great, thanks. Mm-hmm. Um uh, the night that I called you, that she wanted her to spend the night, and she told me that um, she was uh, on the porch, and that I had to let her in. And I'm going, God. okay. And I, I freaked out, and I'm literally texting Dave, and I'm like, uh, Dave, I'm like, I have a question for you. Um, what do I do? Uh, and better you hope, were better hope she's not a vampire, because that's how they get you, right? Uh-huh. I know you're doing uh-huh. vitamin. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I contacted Dave, and I'm going, okay, well, what do I do? I'm, and he's like, well, obviously she's already been in your house. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want her back in here. <laughs> um, and actually, our dog, as I'm standing on the porch waiting for Dave to call me, our dog was going crazy. I mean, I'm standing on the porch. My daughter is inside the house next to the door waiting and getting really agitated with me. Um, and the dog is staring out the door going crazy. And I'm going, what the heck? You see any people, any animals? No. no animals, no people, nothing. Nothing else outside except for me on the porch. And usually I can go out there and I'm, she's fine. She'll stand by the door and wait for me to come in. But she's never growling, barking, unless there's something else that she can see that I can usually see out there. Um, That's a weird situation. Just yeah, waiting for... Very unsettling. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at my phone going, please, please just start ringing. Please just start <laughs> ringing. One and of the like, most yeah. interesting things is is right after you called me, I went out, I, I was taking my dog outside and something started following me around outside of my house in the alley and stuff. Which, And I don't know if it... like Because when you called me the first time, I started feeling stuff as well. But I know there's also something in my place and I think that when I start thinking about it or ruminating about it it kind of like, you know, flips yeah. the switch or whatever. Yeah. But there's there was definitely, like, every time you would call me and talk to me about Junie, something would on my end, where I'm at. Maybe it's start, interesting. Start Maybe it that. would like to and come and get her and take her back to your house. Yeah. That would be <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mind. No, you guys did want to try that experiment where you take yeah. Take something it in and move mm-hmm. it Somewhere on. Else. So we're gonna location. hopefully try to do with this, try to get rid of it, you know. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, um, we'll push it into Jay's house. Um, um, no. <laughs> in the garage. He'll kick well, the, he'll, he'll, he'll kick the other one out. Joe, this is what we gotta do. We gotta start collecting these oh, things yeah. up and bringing them all to Oscar's house. Good, but yeah. not, not let them know. <laughs> no. Oscar's <laughs> producer. We let them you know had in asked garage. Um, no what happened Sunday? Yes, I did. Before I had contacted Dave, I was at my brother's house and I was talking to the first thing originally I was talking to my mother and my sister-in-law and I explained everything that happened you know I I told them up until that point what happened with the imaginary friend and as soon as I got done with 
explaining everything to them down to what our pastor had said, uh, all of a sudden you heard like this rumble and you felt the house like rumbling. And I'm going, okay. And I'm looking at my sister-in-law and she goes, we're a little too far off the main road for this to be like a truck or anything like that. Was that here in Oak Lawn? Um, no, they live uh, about a town over. Okay. So, um, but they, they do live, like, they, they don't live on a main street. They don't live somewhere where trucks frequent so that you could say, oh, it was just a truck driving by. Do um, any of their neighbors have a Tyrannosaurus Rex? No, no, they don't. Okay. Not that I know of. I mean, unless they're keeping it in their basement and they're keeping it really quiet. Um, I've never seen one. <laughs> Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm like, I can just kind of write that off. I'm like, maybe it was just the house settling or something, house settling for 35 seconds, but mm -hmm. yeah, okay, fine. Um, and like the longer we were there, it was kind of like, okay, there's, there's weird things going on here and there. Um, the next thing that happened was, um, my daughter, my youngest daughter and my niece were downstairs playing in my niece's room, which is on one side of their basement. And my nephew was on the opposite side of the basement my brother had come upstairs to get something. And the next thing you hear is my nephew, like, cry bloody murder. Oh. And I'm going, oh, my gosh. The girls come running upstairs screaming. My brother runs downstairs to check on his son, brings his son upstairs, and he's got three finger marks on his arm and a scratch going down his arm. Hmm. Oh. And, you know, we're questioning, the girl, where were you? Yeah, what, were you in the room? Were you anything? near him? What did you do? But yeah, what did you do was the next question. Um and the girls, you know, my niece will never lie to me. I don't know why. I have some type of power over my niece. <laughs> and my brother and sister-in-law hate it. But um, <laughs> I, she will not lie to me. She does not, has never. Uh, and I looked at her and I said, look me in the eyes. I said, promise me you were nowhere near your brother. And she goes, I swear. She goes, I was, we were in my room. She goes, and he was in the playroom. And I said, okay. I said, well. And I looked at my sister and I said, nobody was near him. I said, how did he... Well, what, did the, what did the kids say happened? They don't know. They had no idea. They but were nowhere near him. There the was, one who got scratched, what did he say? He's three. Oh. He can't... Yeah. Like, he can, like, mumble certain yeah, words, he can't but he can't form a well. sentence. Yeah, there was no way he would have been able to tell us what happened. But, but he was scared to death. The creepy part was, though, is that um, my cousin, the, like, older one, how old is he even now? Six. Six. She like told her mom and her dad after we left that that I had brought the monster into the house <laughs> and that it left when I left. That you had brought a monster and yeah. it left when you left. Yeah. yeah. The basement, definitely, you know, like we were walking around and there was no. This here. isn't here. Not, this oh, was not? at their this house. This is at another home. Yeah, they oh, have wow. a totally so finished saying, basement, bathroom, laundry room in between the playroom and my niece's room. So they said oh, okay. Brooke brought a monster and the monster yeah. left when Brooke left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dee was also with you? Yeah, she so was. So Brooke and Dee brought a monster. Yeah, and, the monster and my middle and daughter was with us also at the time. So, I mean, it was just that and, you know, their their two cars were in the driveway. Their car alarms went off without the lights off, without the lights going on. I mean, you could feel the vibration of the car alarms, but there were no lights. And I looked at my brother and I'm like, are you messing with me? And he goes, the remotes are right on the table, right on the counter there. And I'm like, okay, I can't explain this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Um, my mother had left. And um, her dog is, like, psycho, hates everybody. Uh, you look at her, and she'll just growl and bark her head off at you. Mm. Um, she was literally sitting in the corner of my mom's room, up by her gate, between the door and the gate. And she's staring into my mom's room, and she's just shaking. And my sister-in-law's sister and her fiancé had come over. And um, her fiancé looked over the gate, looked at the dog, and the dog didn't do anything. He reached over the gate, pet the dog, and the dog did not go to bite him, didn't growl at him, nothing. And I looked at my sister-in-law, and I'm like, did you just see what I saw? She goes, I think so. And then she called her sister upstairs. She goes, come here, because my mom's dog has literally attacked her sister before. She hates her, like hates her. <laughs> yeah, entirely. absolutely. And um, her sister went up to the gate, no noise, looked over the gate, no noise. Reached in and pet the dog, and nothing. Did not growl, did not bark, did so not snap at her. So what do you think was pacifying this dog? I have, she was scared. She was shaking. Oh, she was scared to death of something. And we're just sitting there. I threw my hands up. I said, I'm done. I'm going home now. I said, 
see you later. She goes, well, she goes, don't forget to take your imaginary friend too. <laughs> I'm like, I hate you. Have like, they had just, any experiences after you guys left, or is it? Um, no. no, she problem. said she had called me later that night, and she uh, she brought me to tears when she told me that um, my niece had told her that I brought a monster there, and the monster left when I left. Hmm. And that almost, I mean, that killed me. I, I love how, my niece how old was the girl that said that? She's six. six. And she, she had she had no idea. No, no idea. That and she's like her parents and her grandparents don't even let her watch TV half well, the time. And, yeah. And on top so. of that, Dee wouldn't have described Junie as no. a monster. So where did she get point. that from? Yeah, that's right. Good I point. mean, she's you know they she's they take her to church every Sunday. They're Catholic. They you know the whole nine yards. They don't talk about things like that. She doesn't watch TV. Like my daughter said, she doesn't watch TV that much. She doesn't read things like that. She doesn't, you know, they, they keep her very sheltered. Um, unlike my oldest daughter. <laughs> um, but With yeah. With her crazy blue hair. I know. Right? <laughs> Not sure a lot of kids can see things that a lot of people right. can't. Exactly. You know? right. We've talked about this mm-hmm. a number of times on the show. But, but that's what bothered me, I think, the most was that, I mean, she associated it with me and it was like it broke my heart because she's always telling everyone that I'm her favorite aunt and that you know she's so close to me and her and I have such a close relationship that does she just casually say that too she's like oh she's bringing the monster back I'm yeah like, like she, no big deal was, it, my, my like, sister-in-law went to tuck her into bed and she goes you know mom she goes Auntie brought a monster here with her tonight, and my sister's mom's like, "What?" Wow. And she goes, That's "Yeah, so she goes, but it left when Auntie left." She goes, "So it's okay now." No big deal. That's weird. Huh? I'm like, "Oh my god." The Go weird thing was, is I was like, "Why would you see it as like this like little girl, like her friend?" But then my like cousin saw it as like a monster. Like that was because really weird. Because right now it might be presenting itself as a child, uh, you know, a nice or a good thing. Manipulation. But why do you think that it would present? It we don't we, to her like that then, so it could get yeah, her but, but we don't know if we if she, she she did she actually she, she's never actually seen it only in dreams, right? I don't know because has like Dee I said, you has seen, Dee ever seen Junie? She she'll tell you she has. She'll tell you oh she's standing right there. But why would mm-hmm. she be so terrified so, when she's dreaming? But not that's the other question mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um, and also too, like anything could change form, or you know, we right. we don't I know. I think it's just manipulation. And the, and this this could be two separate things. We don't I think know. Jojo, well, Jojo might be onto a point with this manipulation. For yeah. some reason, if there is something there, they taught all those kids, you know. Cause right. They're like what was to, happening with my daughter. This thing came in as like this jokester, making saying funny things, saying that it it eats it eats ghost food and it doesn't wear clothes. Yeah, it's running around that. naked, you oh know, making her laugh. But then Did you listen to that episode. Yeah, after you told me not to, like. It, uh, two yeah, days ago, it, I literally it, was sitting uh, I think it is, and I was listening to it. And, if oh it God. does exist, it, I think JoJo's on to a point of this manipulation. is trying to, you know... Uh, well, that and my niece never reason, would have seen anything like that. So right. how would she it's befriending, know? No, it's bef- befriending D, manipulating <coughs> D, showing its true colors to and, and, another and, yeah, child. And your niece what is if something at that house, is. at this, your, your family's house... Did did anything happen to Dee at the house? Were any of the kids being mean to Dee? Was any strife happening where this thing I mean, might have lashed out and showed its true colors, its true face? I mean, they fight no, like no. typical kids. I give me my give toy me back. back. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so what about like your kid? Didn't you say like the, does she act different though towards you or anybody? Lately. Are you noticing? That's a good question. Uh, Are you lately. noticing personality changes or oh sleep gosh. pattern changes? You know, um, um, personality Delilah changes. mentioned you know, a sleep pattern change that was yeah. notable. What about personality changes? Um, she throws the worst temper tantrums ever now. Um, she Never did to, this before. I mean, it was mild temper tantrums. Normal I don't want to do this. Right? I don't want to, yeah. you know, whatever, normal. But um, when we were going to the store the other day, the same day that she told me that the wheels on the car were going to kill her, um, she threw the mother of all temper tantrums on the way out of the store. I had to pick her up. Um, my my boyfriend was checking out in the store. I had to pick her up and take her out, and she was literally punching me, kicking me, slapping me, yelling at me, and I'm going... Who is this child? Yeah, I, I literally was, like, in awe, and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to get her in the car. She's slapping me in the face. I'm like, 
this is crazy. I'm like, she's never hit me like that before. I mean, she's tried, and I, I'll tell her, you know, kick me one more time, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And she'll stop. I, she would not stop. I, I literally, like, <laughs> going, oh, my God, please. I'm like, this has to stop. I'm like, I can't defend myself from this child at this point. Does that seem to be happening more and more frequently? Um, it seems to be happening more intensely. Uh, it seems to be she's getting more angry lately, like more and more angry lately. Um, before she used to ask when her dad was coming back, and I'll tell, I would tell her, you know, he's not, he's not coming back. And now she, she doesn't ask at all. But um, she seems to be, and she never got angry about anything before. She would just be like, oh, okay, and leave it go. Um, but now if you tell her, like, Jeannie can't come over or you can't see her right now or you've got to go to school today and she can see you later, um, she'll be very angry with you. And she, she gets very agitated. And it's like, okay, well, you, you watch this sweet little bubbly four-year-old and she gets very, her face gets angry, her muscles tense up, and it's like, okay, well, just calm down. I'm like, do you really think you want to throw this fit right now? And she'll walk away from me. And I'm going, okay, well, wait a minute. I'm like, what happened to the kid that was here three seconds ago that was, you know, ready to watch cartoons with me and run out the door and go to school? I'm yeah. like, wait. So, I mean, it, it definitely, the intensity of it and the frequency of it are definitely increasing both. both okay. Are. All right. Um, um, go ahead. Now, your mother passed away in this so house? Or your grandmother? My grandmother. Right. Grandmother. So we got it. There, there's um. Let's, let's There's see. quite a few things happening here. Right. right? I, I'd this, like to, to... We have this little girl who went to Bachelors Grove, mm-hmm. where it may be a source or it may not be a source, but bringing it back home to this house, there's been... There's other incidences that, that happened, happened here. Right. This was there, my family's house before it was my house. Okay. I give, us, house. give us some history of other we were things of that have happened. Yep. Um, I uh, moved in here probably about 10 years ago now. It's been about 10 years. Um, my, my grandfather went to ho- on hospice, and my grandmother needed somebody to help take care of him. So I, and it was more than 10 years ago, that was about, ooh. So it was originally your grand- my grandparents' parents house, yes. and they were the second owner of this home, correct? Yes. How long did yes. they live here? They lived here, um, gosh, they've, they've owned this home for 17 years because they bought it when my oldest was about six months old. Okay. So it's been in our family for about 17 years now. So like 98, 99, something like that? 99. 99. Fall of 99. 99, Right before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. The the previous owner, the first owner died. Right around the time. Here? That's what we were told was the husband had died here. That's right. Good call. Okay. And then uh, then your grandfather died here? Yes. Um, In that, that room where I felt it? In the back room, yes. Um, your stepfather, did you say? My also? stepfather, um, about three, almost three years ago, yeah. And in the same room. In the same, in the room, the same room. Yes. And then, which uh, with the the heart of everything, where we feel it the most, uh, that's uh, where your grandma slept, right? And, uh, that's where and she, she got died best. Which yeah. is also Dee's room. Dee's room. Yes. So yes. Tell me about the the red haired guy. Get out of my mind. <laughs> Whoa! I swear to God, um, I was going to be like, okay, so who's I'll the orange I'll tell you my grandmother's guy? part of it, and then I will let her tell you her part of it. Okay. Um. My grandmother used to, she had Alzheimer's, so um, I, I know the stories about Alzheimer's, that they're in and out. Um, but she used to always complain that this, this red-haired guy would always wake her up in the middle of the night by pinching her toe really hard. And she would tell me, she's like, can you just tell him to stay away? And I'm like looking at her going, okay, you're nuts, lady. <laughs> um, but she would, and it would happen rather frequently, and the sicker that she got, the more her Alzheimer's kicked in, the more she would complain about this red-haired guy that would pinch her toe and wake her up. Did the red-haired guy, did he have any facial features, um, anything? She never features, said, anything? she never told me. She just said he had red hair, as soon as she was, Clothes, as soon as anything? she woke up, he would walk out the door. Out the Didn't hallway you say door here. something about him smiling at her or grinning at her in some You way? said something about that. Mm-hmm. Now, have you, uh, Delilah, have you seen this red hair man? When I was little, I would always, like, me and my great-grandma were little, really like, close. Like, I think almost, maybe a little bit older. These age, got it. So about mm-hmm. four, five, six, somewhere in there? Yeah. Okay. In this home? Yeah, in this home. So I was really close to her, and I would always want to either be around her or be in her room or whatever, because I want to spend as much time with her as I could. And... I don't, I don't even know when it was, but I was coming around the bend right here into my grandma's room, 
and I ran too fast and like I stopped like right in the doorway because right in front of the closet I saw like this guy with like red hair and he had a really 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 creepy like grin and it, it, it got under my like I was little so you the chills too again yeah I was little so it freaked me out because I didn't know who that was I don't know who's in my house well, so I well, just screamed and ran away was his hair short or long or curly or it wasn't like Obviously, like long, like yours is in the front, but it was like shorter. But you could still tell that it was there and it was red. Hmm. But like, I didn't look at him for more than five seconds because I was really scared. Could you remember so I ran anything about the clothes? He looked like he was almost in like a like a tux or like a suit, like a black tux or suit. Are you sure you're not talking about a leprechaun? <laughs> <laughs> Leprechauns would be in green, but they'd be in a tux or a suit. Uh, no. <laughs> now, Brooke, do you know anything so it wasn't about a green suit? Do you know anything about the? The owner before your grandparents? No. Pictures, photos? No. no. Well, be, before we started recording, you looked up somebody online. Who was that? I was trying to look up the gentleman online, but there was no pictures of him. Oh, so, but you yeah, did find... Yeah, I found his, right? I found his obituary. His obituary. But there okay. was no, no photos. No it photos. would be interesting if you could put it on a to-do list for yourself. Could you maybe find photos of Yeah, what if, what if they, that's what they buried him in, the suit. <laughs> yeah, oh. but I want to know and the features, last name hair color especially. match, like, oh, somebody yeah. who would be... Yeah, yeah. A red you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, the well, other... You, you would think, this is but you would think... Predominantly Irish, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you would yeah. think that... In the last name was not bad. All right, but if well, we this could is a try to find, if we could pin someone down with red hair in the history of this house, now, that would you, be gold. When she would have seen that, this is like long before my grandmother's Alzheimer's came ah, out. Oh, okay. So. I, I have a similar story, but I, yeah. I saw something as a kid. This uh, it's like kind of like a early like seven six uh, sixteen hundred like late sixteen hundred early seventeen hundred. This uh, big um, yeah. big white beard. I saw him like as a, as a kid, and then just like about a couple like about a year ago, um, he came to my grandma. And so it's kind of how you and your grandma, oh. we went through a very similar thing. You and I were yeah, talking about that, too, about the fact that um, my grandmother and her could possibly be sensitive, which would mean that sometimes, I am I'm just choosing not to Sometimes, it, <laughs> no, but, but sometimes it skips generations. Well, I, I think, um, Brooke, yeah, honestly, I think that you might have had a similar thing when you were a little girl. And you just chose it to block it out. Did you talk to your mother at all or your parents to see if you might have had similar... Have you talked to them about this uh, at all? Yeah, my mom said that I had an imaginary friend and that she used to have to actually set a place at the table for it. It's It's very common. And that, but she, I mean, we we lost my dad when I was very young. So she said that she didn't know, obviously she never got me any therapy or anything, so she didn't know if it was because of that or... But um, she thought she thought she remembered it being before my father had passed away. Wow! So um, it runs through the female bloodline, the female line in my family. It, okay. From many generations back to right now, with my daughter, it follows the females. I'm as obtuse as a brick. I mean, it's got a. These guys are flipping around on the floor because the energy is so intense. And I'm like, what, what, what? What time is it? You know. Mm. So I, maybe it's the same thing. As I believe in past family, lives. It's this, yeah. The female kind of. Well, I had told Joe, and I think I told it's you obsessive. about the the psychic that a friend of mine made me go see a while ago. I mean, we're talking like four or five years ago. She made me go see the psychic, and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I will get some fun out of this. Um, but she had told me that I was emp- empathetic or an empath or empath. something like that, mm-hmm. and I'm going, empath, yeah. okay. I'm like, whatever. She goes, well, have you ever walked into a funeral home and you don't know anybody there, but you you get this overwhelming feeling like you're you're crying because they're crying and right. I'm like well, yeah but everybody does that and she goes no they don't yeah. I'm like this well, is, I would say, when I describe I no. yeah. when I describe like I have several different theories about what the energy is um, one of which being a collective energy of living people mm-hmm. like that you would feel in something like a movie theater um, which is not necessarily to say that anyone died there, but just all the collective energy of living people being in that space and yeah. emitting different emotions yeah. kind of collectively comes together as one yeah. entity or energy or whatever. Um, and I specifically describe what I feel in, in, a, in uh, a funeral home or even like a nursing home or a hospital mm-hmm. is that kind of energy, which isn't necessarily the energy of people that have died there, but the energy of all the sadness and the sorrow that you feel from right. the people. That's why I think that if your grandmother died in this house, 
and she had Alzheimer's at the time, mm-hmm. like that could leave a, like a whole menagerie of crazy stuff behind. Not only because like of where energy, not be, not only because of where her mind was at the time, mm-hmm. but right. also who knows what well, she was able to attract in that state of mind. When we yeah. would listen to her, I mean, she would bounce back and forth from mm-hmm. you know one minute she was a child and she was asking for her mother, right, and then the next minute she was. You know, back to herself asking for my grandfather, and, being, and then she bounced in between also. So I mean, it was it was wow. uh, so. being in that state of mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it breaks down those walls that uh, that keeps us from seeing it once we get older. So when you were a little girl, you probably had a similar imaginary friend as Dee does, um, and then I would suffice it to say that your great grandmother probably also had an imaginary friend when she was a little girl and maybe when she was in that altered state of mind where she was back into a childlike state mm-hmm. of where that wall goes away maybe she was being visited by her imaginary friend again so well, I, I believe a lot in past lives and uh, I like for my situation that Actually, guy with that beard kind of a description mm-hmm. of I, I, when I was a little kid <laughs> I must have been like two or three I couldn't even speak that movie scared the heck yeah. out of me when I was younger but I, I remember <laughs> the description of the red haired guy yeah I know that's drop dead friend yeah, yeah. and his friend go to hell Harry <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing is though is like when I like when I was little and I saw this guy he was like so tall like his tallness is part of the reason why he scared me so much but now to this day when I like see really Really tall things in movies, like really tall people or whatever. I get so scared. How do you it's feel about scary. redheaded people? The, the, the I don't care, but no. it's just like when well, she's they're not, dyed her hair. They're not, they're not, they're not real. So obviously, like, they're not real people anyway. <laughs> they, like, they creep me out more. Like you know how I'm, I'm afraid no, of clowns. So no. whenever I see a clown, like my heartbeat oh, starts going Lord. up, I start to get <laughs> scared. Huh. But then when I see these people in these movies, like it scares me more than it should. Even when it's not like a pop up, when it's just like they're standing there, like it just creeps me out so bad. My yeah. girlfriend, my girlfriend has a has a uh, an aversion to like little people, like <coughs> midgets. Mm. And the other day we were we were we were at a stoplight. We were at a stoplight, and there was a little a little person on the corner. And not only was he a little person, but he had like deformed arms. Oh. And I was like, "Hey, look at that guy!" And she was like, "She's like, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here." She was like freaking out. Like um, it was she crazy. She can't even look at Ronald McDonald. <laughs> well, all right, we're getting well, off the rails. Uh, all right, let's bring this yeah. back around. So. Speaking about past lives, when I remember as a kid, when I saw this guy, I must have been like two, three. I could I couldn't speak. I when I saw him. Uh, I'm like, oh, that was me in my old life, in an old life. And you remember this? Yeah, I just, I just knew it. Like, I'm like, oh, like no big deal, you know. And I would see him when I was little. I'm like, oh, that's me, and because it was, it was, it was, it was him, a girl, a kid, and a baby. And I'm like, oh, that's my family, and that's me, like in a past wow. life, and like a, in an old life. And it, it's weird. You don't know, like, you're like, like you don't, you like when you're young, you can't make up this stuff. You don't know right. any better, and you just, you just know. You just see oh. yeah. Um, and later, later on, about a year ago, my grandma saw this guy, and I, I believe, you know, it's we're, we just keep on coming back. Uh, like, like you know, he might have been my grandpa, or you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, no, and, that uh, I can, that so I can. So how do you think believe. that relates to what's happening here? Maybe um, that could have been somebody in your family, like a great grandfather, or. Or somebody with in, red hair, though. I mean, well, well, we you're, you're, you're Irish, Irish, right? Irish roots. It looks like Scottish, Scottish, Irish, yeah, Scottish, Irish, Scottish, Irish Italian. Italian. Like, I mean, like a lot. You don't, you don't have to just be Irish too to have red hair. I mean, yeah, there's the only there's, hair that, that would come from would be the Irish. There's actually yeah, red-haired sweet. Jews in my neighborhood, which is. I never really seen red haired Jews before. <laughs> but I moved into this <laughs> Orthodox, yeah. Orthodox right. neighborhood. You're explaining the time, Irish one part one of it away and saying that it couldn't be that we've just got a red headed Jew <laughs> in our It's a Jew. Okay. Uh, all, I, all I'm saying. You ever notice money missing? All, all, uh, yeah, a lot of them. Cut it out. No. All yeah, I'm yeah. saying <laughs> is that red hair isn't specific to no, I know. Irish or, or I know. anything. Like but when he said family, to Jews. What are we talking about? <laughs> I always hear you missing money to my kids. We went when from the dark bread. What about when, 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 uh, when the thirteen year old in the room has had enough? <laughs> what, are the, what are those those, those orange uh, orangutans? I gotta keep them in line. <laughs> JoJo's keeping us in line. He's gonna take over the show one day. You sound like Mike Pence and Donald Trump discussing policy. Uh, right here we go. Oh no. No, 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 you are not allowed to go there, please. No, no. Oh, no. God. But you know, we're we're getting we're rounding uh, about an hour and ten minutes already.
already, and you know we're having a good time, we're laughing, which is good because <laughs> concerning what's going on here, it is a serious thing. Yeah. Um, what was your hope on having us come here, and 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 more so you allowing this story of your family to actually be released to you know the, the thousands of people who listen to the show? What, and, and furthermore, what is your hope? Furthermore, was my was your phone call to me and coming here, me, my coming here helpful in any way? Yes, you proved I wasn't crazy. Okay. That that was my first Which thing. Which is what I a lot of people, you. that's all they want. Is to know yes. that we're not crazy because we can't, we're not those people who come in and be like, we're going to get rid of everything. The place is going to, the house is okay. clean, right? From, from Poltergeist. I, I think right. during our conversation. Because how during, can you do that with something you don't fully understand? Right. Right? It's impossible. Well, during our um, first, con- my first conversation with Dave, I kept telling him, I'm like, look, I've seen all these shows. I, I, you know, oh, do you hear this? No. Bullshit. Um, so I told him, I said, I'm not one of those people. I said, I am a very logical person. I will explain everything away. Even if I see something dead in front of me, I will explain it away as my eyes are playing tricks on me. I mean, um, Jay just showed us this video of of sounds and a chair moving around in his garage. Yeah. And I'm still like, you sure? You sure it wasn't a raccoon or a cat that got in there was running around? <laughs> well, that and the, the, like, the, the thing in the car. And it's like, no, it's the feet. Look. Yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I kept telling him, I'm like, I'm not this kind of person. I'm like, but please, you have to tell me I'm not crazy. I'm like, because the things that are happening around my family right now, around my daughter, I'm losing my mind. I'm yeah. like, I've got to be crazy. I'm, I've got to be losing it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when he offered to come out that night, I, I literally, I was like, Oh my God, thank you. I'm like, thank you, because at least you can either tell me if I'm losing it and need to go get help psychologically, <laughs> or you can tell me if I'm not losing it and this is actually happening. Yeah. Um, so, so the important thing is, the important thing is your D, your four-year-old, thinks it's happening. Yes. Right? She, that's the important thing. Whether, whether you believe it, she believes it, it, that little girl believes it. So you have to right. cater to that. Um, right. She's not... Crazy. She's not bad. She's not no, wrong. not at all. She no. believes that something is there, right? Yes. Um, something is frightening her, like she told her pastor. You just have to be f- there for her in that in th- that motherly capacity. I believe you. Everybody, right. You're not crazy. Everything's fine. You know. Well, and I still, um, when it comes to my faith, I, I kind of ride the fence as far as okay. Well, how much do I believe in all of that? You know. Exactly. So it, it was she kind believes, of you know right. that something's happening. And for me, it was well, how much do I put into what he's, what my pastor's mm-hmm. telling me, and how much do I kind of go, you know, this is just not. Right. I mean, but when Dave came out and said, he's like, you know, no, there's definitely something going on. And then he's like, you know, try and start recording stuff. And I recorded stuff that you guys are obviously going to listen to. Um, but I started hearing stuff. And I got to one Hearing point, stuff on the recorder, not in the room. Yeah, no, 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 no. On the recorder, I started hearing stuff. And I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I can't listen to this anymore because I'm just, no. So I'm letting you guys obviously take the recorder and you can figure that one out. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, it just, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you guys have come out and told me I'm not crazy I, and that my yeah, daughter is I, 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 think, I think the good thing, too, is I do not feel any uh, any bad or, like, negative yeah, spirits I, I didn't, here. I didn't get anything negative either. It's strong, yeah. and it's, it's presence, and it's definitely there, but nothing nefarious, nothing negative, nothing that seems like it's trying to do harm. Yeah, yeah and, and I haven't mean, met Dee, and I don't know if it's, a, you, you know, it's attached to her. But you didn't feel anything uh, negative when she was around? Uh, no, I mean, it is it is definitely something attached to her, but also it's still here when she's not yeah. here. But so there, there's might, a lot be, of things. there might be sure. several different energies here, right. one of which is attached to her and a couple others that mm-hmm. are kind of coinciding. Exactly. But see, to me, anything that's yeah. attaching itself to my child yeah, and making my gone. child act differently... Oh, yeah. It's gotta go. I mean, well, it's think of it. Gotta, you gotta think no. of it as a, think of it as an animal. Think of it as like a like a stray kitten that followed her home and just wants to hang out with her all the time. It's easier said than done. Like it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It just it's attached to her be, for whatever reason. It wants to be around her and it <laughs> likes her. And there's really no rhyme or reason to it, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. As I'm looking at the crazy cat lady next to me, um, <laughs> how many cats do you have? Okay. <laughs> 
choose the appropriate amount. No, she's tried to convince me for more, and I've told yeah. her I'm not. So those cats are cool, though. Well, well, the problem yeah, is cool. if it is affecting yeah, really cool. sleep, like, if it is affecting right. Right. Yeah, it looks like mood. tiger and leopard. Right, cool. that, that is an issue. You right, know, um, and so far it's it's kind of becoming more problematic than it was before. Before mm-hmm. it's okay if it's just an imaginary friend, just somebody you're going to play with, just somebody you're going to talk to. I can see that as maybe a comfort measure because of everything that her father's put my entire, my, all of my girls and myself through. Um, but which, yeah, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother ball of wax that's going on here. Exactly. Um, Have you tried letting her sleep with you? Yeah, she and, does quite and, oh, well, quite frequently. Is, she'll crawl in bed with us. How does she react when? And is that a new thing? And does, no, and does that affect does she get angry? Okay. Does that affect you in any way yeah. when she comes into bed with you? Do you feel any differently or have crazy sleep? I can't dream? sleep when she comes into bed with me. I have such broken sleep it's not even funny. Dr- I'm, I'm up and down all night long. Do you feel like something's in the room or just dreams waking you up or just you just wake just up randomly? Right I just yeah. am constantly waking up. I, I don't so you, know if it's you must dreams. feel. Do, what about her? Does she wake up constantly? No. So she no, sleeps she good sleeps and she sleeps soundly when she's in with me. Yeah, I'm the one that I remember when we when we would do mm-hmm. co-sleeping with our kids and it was so infrequent. But I had the same thing because I was so cognizant of I can't roll over and smother this kid. Oh, see, you no, know, I even though it's so far me off the bed before I roll over on her. So it's nothing yeah. like no, that. it's nothing like that. I mean, I used to have all three of them in bed with me at one point um, right after. Um, my ex left and everything happened, but um, I had all three of them in bed with me. So thank God I have a king size bed, otherwise I would have been on the floor. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I'll either push them or they'll push me, and there's no way that I'm worried about rolling over on them. But okay, this is going to sound like a crazy theory, but you had an imaginary friend when you were a little girl. We've confirmed this. We yeah. know this. Um, I think. What is attaching her, itself to D might be after you. It might be something that wants to be around you, but because you have those walls up, it goes to D. I have a greenhouse. I grow stuff for my business. I have a produce company. Um, and when a plant gets infested with aphids, for instance, you spray the plant with soapy water or whatever chemicals, yeah. and what happens is if you don't kill all the aphids, what the aphids will do Sounds is they'll find to the, the next plant to go to. And they, they'll be like, okay, well, we can't use this plant anymore, but there's this one over here. We'll get that. We'll grab that one. That's the next closest thing. So this might be what's happening is the reason why when she's in bed with you, she's able to sleep soundly and not have this thing bothering her is because it's coming to you. You just can't tell. You just can't feel it because you have all those blockades up. I see what you're saying. I'd be like... I'm, I would be definitely scared because, I mean, when I was just getting into, like, feeling out ghosts and opening up more, you know, it's definitely weird. You can't really explain stuff without science. You know, that that starts to freak you out. And just the unknown, it's creepy. But um, I definitely understand what you're saying. The only experience that I've ever had that I can truly say I, I can't explain and I totally believed in was um, I was in the hospital about three years ago it's been about three years and um i i had that whole near-death experience um i was basically Hmm. dying actively dying and um i saw my dad in my hospital room standing there and it was just him and i i just got done reading this book it's like called life after death it's people they have near-death experiences they talk about them what they've seen um what they hear and then they what they're saying because they do interview like a good 200 people, everything's kind of similar, and they relate it to stuff that you know Plato's been talking about, or um, stuff that's in the Bible, or like the Time Tan Book of Death. And that's cool how you said you saw your yeah. See, I don't I don't talk about it a lot. A lot no, of people do they yeah. say that, once that, people have a near death experience you open like up that, more. that they open up more, um, like more susceptible to paranormal activity. Have you read that? No, they just, well, some people, you know, they're just, it just says they're not afraid to die, you know? Because what, what you I, I, I hear you are so open great, up more. This is one of the issues with near, near-death near experiences or when people, you know, actually die and get brought back to life is when you are about to die or when, you're, when your body knows you're going to die, it floods your body with, with basically well, we're morphine not trying, and yeah. adrenaline and everything yeah. else. So what... 
I feel that whatever you believe the afterlife is going to be, or or whatever relatives you think you're going to see, or whatever, this is what when your brain is being f- like flooded with all those chemicals mm-hmm. to basically lull you into death, uh, that that you're basically it's basically like taking a bunch of drugs, you know, uh-huh. and essentially what it's doing is. It's allowing your brain to kind of like find comfort in whatever it is that you might find comfort in. Yeah. Interesting the thing. Weird thing was though is that at the same time, right before everything went completely mute, I could hear the nurses talking about what was wrong with me, and I had been in a coma for I think like a day, a day and a half before wow. this had happened, and I don't remember hearing or doing anything. Was this from an accident or a medical condition? A medical or? condition. Okay. Well, so it wasn't yeah. anything that was super sudden or anything? No, no. I had been sick on and off for a long time. And then shortly after this had happened, after I got better, um, was when everything surrounding my marriage started getting really, really bad. Wow. So, yeah, it was just coincidental cool. and very eerie how... When, when my father had a heart attack the first time, he actually... Um, he was having chest pains and was arguing with my mother about whether or not he should go to the hospital. And she made him go to the hospital. And he actually had a heart attack in the emergency room. And when they brought him in, and they had to give him the paddles because his heart actually stopped. And he said, when they were bringing him back to life, he felt like I was hitting him in the face with a hammer. Like you, you were. That specifically oh, is what he oh, gave wow. me as his near-death experience because he had been so terrible to me throughout my life that that's he thought like I was getting vengeance on him or whatever wow. but that's what he saw wow. is his is his final scene or whatever before he was brought back to life so Jeez. you know it, it I you guess know. it depends on on you know because there's a lot of like these near death experiences that are are very similar um and I it's just like when, with the sleep paralysis thing I was describing mm-hmm. to you um what Jojo what time is it? When you have, when you have, when you have sleep paralysis. Something downstairs. I just. Wanna know. When you have sleep paralysis, um, your brain fills in like there's things in the room with you. There's you know. So when people describe like a UFO abduction experience or whatever, that's all it is. Yeah. Sleep paralysis. When they explain a phantom in the room holding them down, it's sleep paralysis. Your right. brain is just filling in what you can't. You know what you can't figure out for yourself. Well, right. we're not we're not here to try to solve the mystery yeah. of life after death. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thing. I know. I'm we're, just, we're getting well, off, no, we're the getting off the reason, rails. The only reason that I brought that up is because um, we had, had a conversation with our pastor, and he said, you know, the patterns that started after that, leading all the way up into um, D having this imaginary friend, are are very strange. Just, you know, after that happened... Just a series of events. Things with my ex-husband getting as bad as they did to his arrest, to the divorce, to her. I mean, it was all kind of like a downward spiral ever since that day. Are you are you still on speaking terms with your ex? Not really. We we talk, but it's it's usually... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's a... If, if, if there would be a a way to bring this up to him. Um, but you said when he was here, he was there was problems. There was so, he was not. Yeah, there was there. <laughs> let's just say he was a very angry person. Very angry. Yes. Was um, there? A, well, I mean, what I'm what I'm getting at is, I wonder if it's something about this house or the energy in this house that was making him that way. Um, yeah, and I don't know if there's any any way to ask him. It would have just he been feels, him then. Well, but it might be just like it's attaching to D. It might be attaching to him in a more negative way. And I thought and about that too. The, the question I'm trying to ask is, if there's any way for you to ask him if he feels, and not because of your relationship or because of the situation or anything, but if he feels differently when he's when he's no longer now that he's living in a different house. Oh no, no he still house. wishes me. Dead, okay. basically. Okay. So I, I know what you're saying, but I, I kind of feel this too because uh, this a lot of her family is in this house. Okay, right. that energy, and it, if it sees things that actually happened and went on, it's probably going to be very upset with him and a lot of anger. You know, yeah. um, there's a, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. I want to ask why are we keeping? Why do you want to keep 
I should say, why do you want to keep the ten-year-old out of this? We never, we haven't named the ten-year-old yet. But no. Um, why do you want to keep the ten-year-old out of this? So she's she's my freak-out card. Um, she she literally she makes up stories. Um, she will. She has a very vivid imagination. Um, she does not like to take things very seriously. Um, she is definitely the child of mine that we have the most problems with. Okay. Um, she was raised as the princess. Uh, my grandmother. <laughs> When she was alive, um, she would get away with murder. She could never, did never, had to clean the house, never had to pick up her toys, never had to do anything. So you think uh, just she would, uh, she wouldn't tell us the truth? Uh, no, she would probably make up a lot of stories for us. Okay. <laughs> and they would probably be some really good ones. Um, you also said the 10 year old was uh, the focus of a lot of the abuse? From this ex-husband? A lot of the verbal abuse, yes. Um, and a lot of the, he, he would like literally pick her up and throw her down her bed and tell her, you've got a time out, stay there. And was was pretty nasty with her and with my older daughter. He would just yell at you a lot. He, ne- he never really like put his hands on you because he... I would knock him out. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like he, he, he took out a <laughs> lot on her. He blamed her for a lot. He blamed her for a lot of things that happened wrong in our marriage. Well, um, we all know that when your parents get divorced, it's always your fault. Yeah. He wasn't my parent. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I oh, probably okay. would. No. No. I'm just trying to see if there's uh, intense no, trauma I know, with I any know, of the kids where this is now projecting yeah, no, outwards into the physical world. Um, my 10-year-old's dad lives up in northern Wisconsin. So we've actually, he's been, he comes down here and spends time with her. He, he'll spend like two weeks down here. Yeah. You know, tell his wife, you know, i got to go spend time with my daughter. I've got to check, check in on her and her mom. And um, he either sleeps on the couch or, you know, takes up one of the beds. And he'll spend a couple weeks down here with his daughter, hanging out and just making sure she's okay. And ever since he started doing that, um, which was right after my ex-husband's arrest, She's been doing so much better as far as, you know, just her overall well-being. She's been doing so much better. So um, he does want to kill my ex-husband, though. He, he said, you know, don't ever let him catch him in a dark alley. Which Whoa, I don't we're recording. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I, I never said names. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so still, it's, it's just the focus at, at, of the four-year-old. Yeah. On the four-year-old. Yeah. Not so much... Delilah. No, she. You really don't have anything going on around. Ten year old never complained about this stuff. No, she she got a little weirded out the other day when I was following the four year old around with her tape recorder. She's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I'm like, "Nothing." She's like, "You're asking her too many questions." I'm like, "Just shut up." <laughs> um. So then she got really freaked out because I think she put two and two together, and she's like, "I don't want to go to bed in here." I'm like, mm-hmm. "Well, the only difference is, is now you know what I'm doing. Yesterday you didn't." Um, so yeah, they, they live in the same room, right? They sleep in the same room. They do. And they share the bedroom. So it's, it's kind of weird oh, for me God. that um, she's never seen or heard any of this. She always hears her sister playing with this imaginary friend, but she's never been bothered by it. Hmm. Even um, though they're in the same room. And just as an aside, you know, we were getting very high EMF readings out of that room in the one particular corner yeah. of that room, which is your, well, it looks like the youngest daughter's and, side. And what happened yeah. in that corner of that room? The corner of that room is where my grandmother's hospital bed was, where she died. It died in that room, in, in that, that corner. same spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is so like, much going on here. <laughs> these bed is on the, the same wall, opposite corner. That corner where um, the dresser is where you guys were getting the feelings and the readings off of was where her hospital bed was. You know what? What was, what was your grandmother's name again? Uh, Are well, we? We can't. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can't. We can't. <laughs> um, off, off, off I'll tell you off record. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we already. But this is the thing that I'm wondering is if Junie might be a manifestation of your grandmother when she was a little girl because you said she was going in and out of states. Yeah, but we had talked about that and that's not like my, and so my grandmother was the her down. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's, my it's, grandmother right. knew my niece and nephew. There was no way my grandmother would ever have harmed either yeah, one of them. No, 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 I'm no not saying that, but I'm saying that you said she has Alzheimer's and she sometimes thought she was a child. Yeah, she but that was, she was she always was calling for her mom. Okay. She but, was always looking for her mom. But, but this is this is my point is that maybe the moment she passed away, the la- the last kind of thing she w- was experiencing was the being child, a yeah. child. And that's what the impression she left behind, and that's what Junie is, is like this child 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know, I know you're saying I don't, I don't feel it's very well. I can tell you that um, my grandmother's last moments before her coma, um, she um, she was really panicky. She um, she was having another heart attack, and I, I had grabbed her hand and I could feel how panicky she was. And she just she couldn't lay down, she couldn't sit up, she couldn't lay down, she couldn't sit up, and she just continued to panic because she could feel herself having a heart attack. She could feel her jaw was hurting, she could feel her chest was really tight, like something was compressing on her. Um, unfortunately, because she was under hospice care, they don't do anything. They can't do anything aside from give her medication to make mm. her comfortable, mm. um, which for me was hell watching it. I mean, it was... But she was alert. She was herself. She, you know, with with Alzheimer's patients, the last moments or hours or days that they're alive, they rally back and they're back to their normal selves. And Mm -hmm. they come back and they they're clear, they're focused, they're. And my brother was here talking to her, and she remembered the day before when my brother told her, "Oh, it's supposed to be nice out tomorrow." She totally remembered everything he said, and usually, like an hour later, she would have forgotten. And this was the next day. So um, watching her go through all of that, she was herself. She was her 80-some-year-old self, and she was in a total panic, and she just kept begging me, call the doctor, get somebody, find somebody, do something. And I, I just, you know, held her hand, and I kept telling her, I'm going to. I'm doing something. I'm gonna, we're going to take care of this. And um, after about five, ten minutes, the medicine the nurse gave her kicked in, and um, she looked at me, and she goes, oh, she goes, Thank you so much. She goes, it's so much better. And um, she goes, okay. She goes, I'm going to go to sleep now. She goes, I love you. And I said, I love you too. And that was probably the last thing I ever said to my grandmother. That's my and wow. um, within about See, an hour, she was Those are some great last words, though. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after, after everything that, God rest her soul, she put me through. <laughs> um, that, was, that was probably the best thing she had said to me in about seven years. You know, it's my, my friend Charlotte... Um, her her husband had Alzheimer's for three years, and when he finally did pass away, she was like, it was such a bittersweet moment for her because it's like, yeah, it's sad that he's gone, but at the same time, it's like she lost him three years ago. Yeah. So it's like this huge yeah. sigh of relief, and I think, I think loved ones of Alzheimer's patients feel really guilty when they pass away because a large part of them are like finally you know like <laughs> yeah to a point you are yeah to a point it's like you know what it, it's I it's no longer this huge monster hanging over the room right but on the other hand it's like and I said we maybe had that's her the monster back. you bring with you everywhere the guilt uh, uh, interesting uh, I don't think so though I really words. don't think so because when my niece was first born the whole first year of her life I babysat her every day. I had her with me every day. And my grandmother was here with her every day. So I I think that's part of the bond that I have with my niece. But my grandmother loved it. She loved the fact that she could see her granddaughter every day. And she loved the fact that she could see my kids every day. So she was always about the kids. She was always for the kids. Anything she could do for the kids, anytime she could, you know, be there for the kids, I, I don't think she would ever do anything harmful or to scare them. Well, or I was just like, the dog moves. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Oh, you didn't see him say no. no. Oh. oh, yeah, she's been saying that yeah. to me the whole time. Well. Um, but, yeah, I, I honestly don't think that she would ever do anything harmful or negative to any one of the kids. Something I realized and um, just the experience of the house is uh, my grandma's house, you know, example, it's um, spirits like to be with spirits. And it's that's almost like snakes or snake pits, you know. It's like like every or like they just like to be together. Do you notice that too? And so I don't maybe yeah, well, there's it's like, it's pulling like, you know, in other energies. There's a lot like, of stuff in here. This is a new theory um, that I actually I don't think I've even told you guys about it because um, I came up with it when I was with uh, Oscar at Bachelors Row. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's essentially like you know people will ask like what like and it's because somebody said well what makes a place haunted, and I said well. What makes a certain species of animal live in a certain place? Or what makes a certain tree grow in a certain area? Or what makes a certain mushroom grow in a certain area? It's habitat. It's a right combination of elements, whether it be a uh, right amount of sunlight, right amount of rainfall, whatever it is, that causes that species to live in that area or to gravitate towards that particular space. 
So I think that there's something that makes the proper habitat for yeah, you know, yeah, for for energy, or whether it's a combination of whether it's like it's like it's windows, like mirrors, like that just area, like who well, knows? Well, whether it's a it's what a, attracts it I, in. Well, I think it has several. Uh, one, it probably has something to do with electromagnetic fields, or it has something to do with, for example, uh, how they knew where to put the pyramids. You know what I mean? It just right, well, yeah, but. Essentially, I think what I understand what, makes, what you're saying. What makes it like, probably, and, and it's just like any other, like any other life form. Like if there's a proper habitat for a specific, yeah. Kind why of does mushroom, moss grow there? If there's a know, specific or, kind of mushroom that yeah. needs a specific habitat, mm-hmm. there's going to be a whole lot of them growing in that one place. If there's a specific tree that needs a specific type of soil. Uh, that's the right pH level, mm-hmm. and the right sandiness, or whatever. There's going to be a whole bunch of those trees in that one little area, and there won't be any like, anywhere like else. For an example, like the Bermuda like 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 Triangle area. or something, they're just like concentrated. They're, for some reason, different spots, you know, attract. Like they say, that's why the Indians knew and had their sacred, you know, sacred towns. I, I, I kind of view it now as like I, I look at spirit energy as kind of uh, an endangered species, you know. Like, if you look at the maps of an endangered species, you'll see, like, these little pockets of them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, the Massasauga rattlesnake is endangered throughout most of the Midwest because they have very specific habitat. They need to live in uh, fens or, like, wet meadows that have crayfish, specifically. They don't eat the crayfish, but they live in the crayfish burrows. And if they don't have the crayfish burrows, they can't overwinter properly, they, hmm. and, they, and they pass, you know, they just die. So they're right in the location, location, location. So it's all about specific habitat. Like, like Tesla's, like, free-forming energy, you know what I mean? They just, you got to know, like, the, the spots, I guess. I guess it's, like, maybe, like, a hot spot. No, I, I, so it I makes sense. So I think there's a certain combination of elements. There's obviously um, the, the ground. Um, the, the surrounding area. It's probably just the energy in that spot. Well, I think you know? that the very presence of the right type of energy, whether it's coming from humans or animals or rocks or exactly. the earth or the soil or whatever, is needs to and, be there. And, may, and, and maybe that energy also, too, could be created. There's after plenty how many of people died, maybe that actually... Like, you know, like, for example, you set up a fish tank, you know? you got to do the biology from all, you know? Right. And it's, it could be the same thing. You just, boom, have so many people that actually passed. And what happens in the fish tank? That specific I'm type of fish takes, different. That specific type of fish takes that corner, and this fish wants to live under that rock, and this one lives under the sand, and that one lives at the top. You know, everyone, everything mm-hmm. finds its own way to look at it. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, in a sense, that, uh, that this stuff is the same way. It just needs to be in the right place. And that's why, when we do find a haunted place, there might be, you know, you're going to feel something down here. You're going to feel something over there. You're going to feel something out, out here. Now, there is something to be said about time being not exact, like the whole concept of linear time not applying to these things. So they can probably be in multiple places at once. Like, they don't oh, have boy. to be there all. We go. But, <laughs> oh, but the thing is that the fact that a lot of these hauntings like specifically have different spirits in them or different energies in them, I think has a lot to do with the fact that there's the right habitat for it. So everything, like, for instance, if there's only one spot in, you know, on each city block, for instance, that would support the habitat that is required for a haunting, everything on that block is going to concentrate in that one spot. Wow. That's no, weird. no, exactly. We really need to develop that. That's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if there's a way to try to well, test that. that out. Yeah. But that's what I've been I've been noticing that because the, there's haunted houses and there's houses where it's like that's like the hot spot where everything is just concentrated, you know, and just building. Like, and the you know, more it is, the yeah. the crazier it gets. Like Bachelors Grove, like this place, like there's like Robinson Woods. There's just certain places for whatever reason they have the right combination of elements to bring mm-hmm. everything together. Well, I think on on that note, we're around an hour and 40 minutes. We haven't even taken a break. It's how how natural this thing kind of flowed. Um, I say we bring it to a close here. Um, Next next time, next episode, we'll actually do an investigation walk around uh, with you and Joe. And and we will... Next time we will... With equipment and... We will actually... um, (laughs) Maybe just one or two of us will actually talk to Dee by herself. Like, we will... You know, I mean, that's what... 
it's what Brooke's I, comfortable with. I could yeah, Brooke, are you, her, are you, you, know, are you younger, comfortable with us, like, talking to her, like, alone? As long as she's comfortable with it, that's fine with me. Maybe um, because I'm younger, Jordan. you know. Yeah, she, she, she'd she'd be loves, more comfortable. she loves anyone from Delilah's age under, so she might actually talk to you more than she would that's talk to you. That's a good idea. That's a good like, thought. No, I, would bring, I would offer to bring guys? my daughter, but... I don't <laughs> yeah, want to bring her into it. another haunted yeah. situation. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. Right. Um, oh, in the meantime, oh, what, be- what does uh, what does D like so we can bribe her with gifts? <laughs> um, Monster High. <laughs> what kind of animals does she like? Um, she loves. She's a dog person. She loves dogs. Okay. She loves cats too, would, but it's more dogs. Would you she's mind? Kind of would you mind if we give her something for like kind of like protection? Absolutely not, no. So That's I told her maybe to give her some crystals and bring in some stuff. I don't know yeah. if you believe in that, but... That anything that would help, honestly. The thing is, with a, maybe just with like a four-year-old, or, the, yeah. the reason why, like, a lot of times people will cleanse a house with sage and, uh-huh. and all this other stuff, the reason why that works a lot of the time, and I, I don't think that there's anything, like, physical behind it. I don't think there's any, like, like I don't think that burning sage is going to clear your house of ghosts. I don't think okay. that having certain rocks around is going to clear your house of goats, ghosts. Mindset. But if you can convince the people that live in that house that it works, they will put up a mental block to have I, it. No I didn't, I didn't it believe it either. You know, but I mean, we just, we have different opinions, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I yeah. think it's... Um, because I think it really does work. I think it's a matter of a mindset and then like how different frequencies can bring you to different levels, you know. Right. Everything is made out of frequency and, you know. Who's his kid's 13? Talks like he's, he's 40. He's very wise for Talks his Talks like he's 13. 40 years old. I love this kid. <laughs> Which, and, you know, but True. that's how my oldest daughter is. She's never talked her age. She's never acted her age. She's always been, and I think it's how you bring them up. If you bring them up talking to them like they're little kids, they're going to act like that forever. Absolutely. I always get in trouble for talking to them like an adult. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, sit to yeah. her. Sit to her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, Joey, give me a beer. <laughs> All right. And That's we're basically, it. her and I are basically, I, I say we're more best friends than I am for mom because that's yeah. kind of how we are. So. Well, while, you know, um, from this point to the next time we, we uh, reconvene, you know, keep logs be vigilant, you know, notice things. I'm just not yeah, recording you know, anything else. Sorry. <laughs> you know what, <laughs> write it down. <laughs> Take a, yeah, keep a journal. Write it yeah, down keep a if journal you can. Of times I, would also, yeah. I would also challenge to ask Dee, could she draw? Give her some pens, mm-hmm. give her some pencils. Could you draw, um, I'm sorry, what was the thing's name again? Junie. Junie. Could you draw Junie? Try to get her to... I have, you know, um, I have a crazy theory or, or a crazy idea here. Um... Call the police station, the Oakland police station. No, 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 seriously. No, 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 no. After what happened with my across street neighbor last, no. All right, well, call the Monday. Call a different. Call a Chicago police station and ask them if they can put you in contact with a police sketch artist. And have the police sketch artist <laughs> no. sit down. No, the no. police yeah. involved. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. I said less. You no. Know. <laughs> well, but the thing is, if they're not, re- they're not actually policemen. They're just artists. That, yeah, they only, only, only charge nine hundred dollars uh, every uh, fifteen yeah. minutes. I'm sure if you told a, a police sketch artist what you were doing, they'd be like, "Oh, I'll, yeah." I'll um, do I'm that. sure That's they might look at me like I'm also crazy. Yeah, but oh, yeah, right. Yeah, but <laughs> Delilah, what did you want um, to say? The other thing is she could say, like, oh, she has blue hair, like, she told me, and then that's right. going to, you're right. going to end up with, like, Britney Spears or something right. like her. It'd be cool if she like, just drew it. I don't know what's you know? worse, having an actual Britney ghost Spears. or Britney Spears. Well, you got to, <laughs> no, what you have to do is you have to frame it to her, like, we're going to get, we're going to make you a nice picture of Junie so you can hang it up in your room, you know, so oh, you can have a picture of your friend. It's worth a you, shot. You have I would like friends that are, I would like I have, I have five, she, I have 5,000 no, Facebook just friends. Have, just have her draw it. I have one, have one, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. What's um, that? Yeah. You're talking about crystals and everything? Yes. Is there any type of crystal that you could give someone that yep. you would like talk to? Like not, okay. What do you mean, like for protection or? 
Like to open up, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. But you and, uh, be careful. I'll, I'll find and talk to you and they can tell, that, like, yeah. whatever they want to. And they what is it, Joel? Which one? Green Kelsey. Like, like, um, telepathically, kind of? Like, I mean, like, she's a, talking about for, more for opening spirit. that sixth sense. In Kelsey. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, definitely. I'm talking about something that my daughter has claimed that her father and the paranormal investigator girlfriend have given her uh-huh. that she claims is a talking necklace. That uh, she talks to. The pendulum? To. Oh, oh wait, All right, uh, wait. The, you man, this Hold is what this is what. I'm told. sorry, you just no. reminded me of it. You, 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 if this is what it is, this is exactly what brought this. It's, she gave her a pendulum. But, uh, it's not. It's not the she four. The four year old. Yes, she gave. Oh. She says she has some kind of a necklace no, at her dad's girlfriend. <laughs> it's happened to him too. She talks to. Did you hear what he no said? No more pendulums that? anywhere. Did yeah, but she didn't call it that. She it, called it a necklace, which is oh, why it didn't it didn't oh, sink yeah, in until Joe started oh, talking yeah. about it. Oh my god. Ask S D S D Where is it? Does she wear come it? Come back over here so you can Does well, she um, Does oh. she use it? Sorry, does she wear it? What is she what what is this necklace? What is it? Ask her where the damn I don't know. She's always just said it's the necklace that I have it's, to leave at it's kinda like a the Ouija board. You hold it. Um, it's worse than a Ouija she, board. Yeah, she can talk worse. to and she can more. say anything she wants to it and but it has to stay get at rid of it. the dad's Get girlfriend. rid of it, get it out of the it's house. Not my have, is it, oh my god. Basically what it is, is These it, are also the people that take her to Bachelor's Grove, to oh, industrial sites. You gotta to keep IMs her you gotta get it away from her somehow. You gotta uh, get it out of her <laughs> what it is? That's exactly what it is. It's Wait, like something you hold in your hand. And the people that use the drug. And then you ask it, you can ask it questions. Sleep, and so, basically yes would go in one direction, no would go in another direction, and you ask it questions and it kinda of just summons it up, you know. You're but bringing it's, it's it like on. Inviting it yeah, in exactly. Yeah. Do you still think this is you're, just, you're bringing it on like a Ouija board, well, you're accepting that it's all right. there. From what I feel now, it's I don't feel no anything good, bad basically. here. But uh, the thing I'm nervous about is I think it's a ta- like it follows her around. It. So it's, right, it's like where she where my she daughter, is right now. Johnny was fun and he was a goofy ghost, and then Johnny morphed into something more. Right, I've heard that. If you know, <laughs> but if if, so, if I feel like when she's around, so it, keeps, she's like. Jump oh. out of her skin. She don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Girl, could it like kind of hide itself? Like hide like what it actually is. That's like, what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. It'll it present can. itself as like, oh, it's not dangerous. But then when you yep. leave, it's it drops yeah. that ex- front exactly. Of the That's exactly what I was saying. Kind of, we're not really saying that this is a possession or anything like that. No, but there's but different stages that go along with that sort of. But that would be why we're going to stop calling it a monster. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's why we're going to stop. There's there's different stages. To a end result of a, a possession, if you believe in that I sort just of thing. All about yeah. that in okay. <laughs> all right. So then you know what I'm talking about. There's different stages where it's she friendly, hates, like, the then it starts the isolating you, then it starts pressing you, yeah, then it starts taking you over, getting Senior full 18. control of you. Um, be fun. The way it started with with my daughter was with a pendulum, which is this what it sounds like they have at this house. Anything could be used as a Ouija board to contact a spirit. It's it's not. The device, I could use this bottle if I wanted to. It's, it's an object that focuses your energy, gets you into the groove of opening yourself up to the other. Well, it so doesn't matter the medium. It's, open, it's getting you in that meditative state, in that state of yeah. um, susceptibility. Yeah. And that's what was happening to my daughter. She would do this goddamn pendulum when we didn't know she was doing it. When we'd tell her to go to bed or go to her room or whatever... She would go to her room and, and use the pendulum that they gave her to talk to Johnny. And all it was doing, it, the pendulum doesn't matter. It's putting her into a spot where it's opening whatever's up. out there is like, boom, there she is. She's open, go. And this is with the, the That might be the doorway that's opening But I would ask her, your she daughter. watches like, um, what is it, Stupid Princess show on Disney Junior, uh, Sophia. Oh, yeah. And I asked her, I'm like, well, is it like that? And she goes, no, Mom. Mm, so and I'm like... <laughs> do, you, are you, do you have anything on okay. right now? No. No. no I, I, I was you guys are always... No, I was going to say, what we could use. But this on, is the but... thing with the, the pendulum. <laughs> Basically... Like, like it, it's not the same thing every any time. It's you, almost like it, you it's always like it's always a different. It, it could be the same if it's in the room, but it's usually a different spirit. So you don't know what's coming. So like every time you do it, it could be a different spirit. 
If she's in like Bachelor's Grove and these like industrial sites, that doesn't help either. No, no, they, bring it on way more. Stuff, and it know? doesn't even matter if she has that. You're if, if if you're sensitive to stuff, you bring stuff home she with you. It follows, especially if you're younger. Yeah, with them and doing this in Bachelor's Grove with this pendulum, then they could have attached something to her. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Little kids like that, they don't belong purposely in haunted locations. They don't. Because they are like beacons of positive Or energy. using something like that, like, uh, he's so dumb. Yeah, when you hear that. I'm, right. I'm sorry I didn't mention it before, like I said. No. You know, we all, all of our, light, all of our lights and sirens just went on. Oh, my God. Yeah. When, when you hear a little kid shit. talk about tire, tires and killing, that's not well, a good sign. it didn't sign. even dawn on me it's when not I was listening to a podcast about your daughter. It didn't even dawn on me until you started talking get rid, about... Get it rid of it. Crystal. Get it out. That's when it, it like was like, wait a minute, she's got that necklace. It's kind of like an imitation. dad's girlfriend. And she tells me that she talks to it all the time. Oof. And talks the last to the necklace. Time, yeah. See? And the last time um, that, that she mentioned anything, I, I heard her telling her dad's out. girlfriend, well, make sure you put my necklace in a safe place. It's in a safe place, Right. And I was like, what necklace? And that was what prompted me to ask her, well, what's the necklace? And she goes, oh, I don't know. I said, tell me. I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, oh, I talk to it all the time. And I said, what do you mean you talk to it all the time? I said, is it like, you know, a Sophia necklace or something like that? I'm like, you know, those I can understand. They're plastic. They, you know, the talks on them. I'll mess around with mine sometimes and for days. (laughs) All this crazy stuff in the house. Oh, yeah. We were messing with the one that night and then like... Yeah. Keep well, it's crazy not, stuff but I can tell him to do that, and he can tell me to yeah. go there's, there's somewhere. Nothing, so, how do you like get rid of it then? If it, it's one day, we, we, we need to have a protection stone. Man. That's what that's what sucks. No, I know. That's what I did. Story, I, it it was yeah, already but. with her. Like aside from if, you, if it wasn't if it was just the necklace then it would be just that for that it's well, dude, it's you, you gotta think smart on. about it be like all right take it over I want to talk to it as well and then plus it, it from her while she's sleeping they could get a new one and all it this sucks, and that but it's getting rid that of the true. medium the device that's putting her into a susceptible state okay yeah. but if I can't get it's rid getting of that, that yeah, well, well she, no, Delilah asked so you get rid of the stone how does it get rid of the thing it's getting rid of the process. Yeah, she but we're gonna have, have to try to clear it. My what kid doesn't mean? have this thing anymore, so you, it's like they was. My logical mind up. says it's like that block goes up. My logical mm-hmm. mind says that I don't think that that thing is actually doing anything, but I right, think this that, could be it. Right, I think that that, that makes that her believe that it is. Uh, and if you can get rid of it and say, okay, well, the telephone you had to call your friend is no longer available. Right. You know. So you can't. I mean, that's, that's, defi- that's definitely paramount. That should be step one. But also, to, it, let, let's just say we extenuating circumstances, and we get rid of it. I mean, m- maybe we could just get rid of it. But the problem is, if she does it again, she might be able. She might bring something else. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like, if we mm-hmm. can't get you know, rid, you gotta just make an with him, get rid you know? of it. Yeah, because even, even, right yeah. even if we get, even if we get, yeah, even if we get rid of this, um, Juni. It might be something else. Philip might come next. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Arthur <laughs> might come next. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm glad, wow, th- yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I'm very sorry I didn't think No, no, no. Right. Right. This is like a whole You've got, know, yeah, we all, wait, you've, got our, <laughs> you've got our opinions on Whoa. it. We understand extenuating circumstances, but I speak from experience. Yeah, that I can't shit is out of my house. I, I can't believe it didn't click in when I, I listened two days ago. Not even I listened to the podcast. And I shit, can't believe it didn't. It's out of the house. Johnny has not made an appearance since. So, for what it's worth, guys, we got to bring it to a close because we didn't even have a break, and, uh, yeah. and there's no logical <laughs> stopping point in yeah. this because it was just so natural. We just kept going to put a break. It worked well. So for we're good at hours, though. We're yeah. at two hours. Just throwing yeah. this out there. We got the EVP rolling and all the aroma. All right, we're going to read and yeah, do that. downstairs. And downstairs, too, yeah. So hopefully we'll get something. Um, in the meantime, just a little homework. You know, be vigilant. Yeah. Take notes. Definitely. See if she can draw Junie. I and, and stay in touch with us. Let the, you oh, know, either Dave or whatever, let us know. Yeah. You know, how things are going before we could get out here again. Go ahead. Yeah. Dave. I feel, um, you know, the more you guys are accepting, you're like, all right, this is what it is. It's going to come more, but it's going to be better in the long run, you know. Definitely. Well said. Okay, so you're going to come out here, right, and sit with her while this stuff is happening and freaking me out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Joey did, JoJo did offer to sit and talk to her. That's yeah. fine. 
Um, and as long as it makes the situation better. So now she's the only other person who would be involved in this yeah. adventure. I, I right? mean, um, my boyfriend has heard some of the stuff that she said and is... Hey, he's listened to the the recordings that I've listened to so far. He hasn't. He's at work so much that it's basically, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh-huh. So he would be the only other person. Uh, yeah. Just for now, ten year olds out of it. Um, the unnamed daughter is yeah. out of it. Possibly a boyfriend and then D, of course. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, Dave, you met Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Quick final thoughts. <laughs> no, I just can't wait to see if we get EVPs. Yeah, and, uh, can't wait to meet D. All right. Well, again, you know, uh, session one, Brooke, Delilah, thank you for having us here in your home, opening up your home and your story. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure our listeners will appreciate it as well. And not thinking I was going to try and kill you, Dave. I appreciate. <laughs> I thought you. <laughs> Dave, he's not scared. I was afraid for Dave. Uh, Honestly, so. I, I am not afraid to die for my beliefs. <laughs> there you go. Well, just so you know, there's no guns anywhere. It's because okay. you don't have kids. That's why you're not afraid. <laughs> All right. Signing off. Jason Knight, take us home. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the SOS-Radio podcast. Be sure to rate us on iTunes and Google Play Music. Download our free mobile app by searching Supernatural Occurrence Studies on Google Play, Apple App Store, and Amazon App Store. Visit us online for ghostly photos that coincide with our podcasts, videos, and other exclusive content at sos-radio.com, chicagosos.com, and supernaturaloccurrencestudies.com. Follow us on Facebook at sos-radio. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chicago Ghosts. We're on YouTube at Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies. Follow Jason Knight on Google+. Remember, that's Knight, N-H-Y-T-E. Email us anytime at submissions at sos-radio.com. And call or text 872-529-0-SOS. That's Chicago area code 872-529-0767. And as always, kind listeners, keep your head up, eyes open, and question everything. Want to save your soul from hell riding on our range Cowboy change your ways today With us you will ride Ride that you never turn